We are live with session four of Shadow's Breath. Last time, you guys were in a deep, dark crypt, uh, just as James had passed out from a purple gas emanating from the undead you guys had just beaten. Uh, when you guys put the orb on the pedestal, a secret trap door opened up, leading down further into the tomb, and a band of Eternian paladins were stuck. They had said they had been stuck for two weeks looking for somebody, but that's when the undead attacked and burst from a door from uh, underneath. And they went out, stole some acolytes, and unfortunately also took James down. So you guys were a bit forced to go down underneath at that point. Bethany was unable to assist you because uh, her father told her not to go. Uh, so you guys went by yourselves downstairs in a deep, dark well, and which led to a wide spreading cavern. Uh, after searching through, you found an undead sorceress who was conducting evil rituals to control this, these ghouls into doing her dirty work. Water bested her. Uh, Kai used all of his abilities up in a final desperate attempt at a firewall, which helped you guys succeed and overcome the sorcerers. At the end, you managed to collect a bunch of gold, a bunch of emeralds. You guys were able to get a boon of wound closure from Bethany as well. Uh, just before leaving, Leon described or explained why they were there. They were looking for their uh, his wife, uh, Bethany's mother, who was the undead sorceress you guys had found. He explains that they were, in fact, a band of paladins that followed a dark deity named Agamemnon, and they were uh, paladins of vengeance. Uh, at one point, they had chosen to become undead in order to be undying soldiers for attorney, seeing it as the ultimate sacrifice. It seems that they were actually from a time beforehand, uh, you know, long ago. And you guys made your way out, he's saying your goodbyes, and that's where we pick up now. James woke up for just a second, but then he passes back out immediately. Fuck, James! So James is not back out. Uh, and you guys have just left the tomb. It's closed back up. It's shut. Can't go back in. Uh, you guys are still still wounded from the fight before. Uh, and now you guys are back on the road. It's about midday. You guys are making your way north, kind of going up a mountain a little bit on your way to Scavale. This was a little bit off the beaten path, but you guys can quickly be, get back on the main road and get back, you know, towards the direction you were to go originally. So, before we hit the main road, I suggest that we do take a moment to collect ourselves, prepare for the troubles ahead. I agree. But you can't. I agree. We've, we've been through a lot, and it would, we would do well to collect ourselves. Yes, I, I agree. And what are what what are we going to do about James? Do we? Well. Alof has been dragging him since the cave, and uh, I would say that he's, uh, he looks like he's sleeping peacefully enough. Um, Got a little bubble going in his nose right now. He, he's comfortable, like he's not in any danger. I say his, he's his book is as worth as much as he is, so mm. might as well just keep dragging him along. Yep, yep, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree. So, yep. Uh, let's, 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 so we set up camp. Uh, I'll, I'll gather the firewood. Uh, uh, Aloth or or uh, oh, Fago or Aloth, yeah, you go ahead and uh, gather the rocks and we, uh, yeah, let's set up camp and have us a nice long rest. Indeed. Yeah. So you guys know that uh, at least behind you, at your rear, the tomb is not going to open up. Uh, if anything, the undead warriors can have your back, so you don't have to worry about anything coming up from the rear at this moment. Um, and going up closer to the mountain, it's becoming more populated. On the road, there's less danger. Uh, there, there's more guards walking, you know, in between roads, in between cities. So there's not, you won't have like the random wolf or bandit come out and try to stab you or gank you at, at this point. Uh, you guys are near enough to the city, you're kind of in society's protection. Uh, so you can sleep peacefully. Okay. All right. I think we got us, I think we got us a good spot here, boys. All right, so uh, let's let's light us a fire and bed down. Uh, we have food, I imagine, a plenty. Uh, 
C- correct, Pally, uh, Aloff? I have a rabbit. I think I might have eaten some of it. I have but... some venison, and uh, that that'll suit me fine. I love I love me some deer. So you guys are uh, making a fire. Making a fire. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's it's getting uh, closer to evening. Sun's starting to go down. Reds and purples are showing up. Uh, the birds are quieting down. Uh, uh, right now so good time to make a fire winds getting a little chilly so yeah uh roll a d20 see how how good of a fire you can make all right i imagine you're making it yes i'm, I'm making it yeah. I, back, back back east i was called the fire maker mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. Uh, i was prof- profoundly good at the skill six Ooh, all right uh, anyway, I'll, 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 I'll handle okay, it okay all right Alo- Alo- i literally Alo- have <laughs> yeah Alof, uh, <laughs> my delay yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Roll, roll the d twenty. Let's see. Let's see how. I think I'm just gonna how go to cool bed. it is. <laughs> Nineteen. Ooh, all right. So, how do you like this fire? I just I scream into it, and embers like appear and coalesce inside the fire, dispersing the flame. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with a scream. Yeah, yeah. So Layden's there. He's uh, he's he's trying with the fucking uh, uh, rock and can't get it. Can't get the sparks quite. Got so Alof, you know, just walks up and just leans down in the fire and goes, Aah! and you know, boop, fucking fucking bursts right there. And now you guys have fire. I immediately <laughs> feel more confident about our chances. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to show me how to do that sometime with their Alof. Stick to the stick to the arrows. I I guess <laughs> one must know his place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. So the uh, fire's fire's lit. You're cooking your venison. Uh, I imagine you make enough for for everybody. Mm-hmm. So you know. Does just, one of my venison feed everyone, or do we each have to feed? Uh, all just all say you just erase it and put you have one ration. All right. Because yeah, we said it was going to serve us four. All right. Uh, you're serving three people right now, so yeah, gotcha. you'll have one ration left over. Got it. You you made the food. We're not rolling. Uh, to see if you can make the food. We'll want to see how good it is. Okay, all right, let's see. And you'll add survival to this. Okay, add survival. Yeah. You couldn't make the fire too good, but, you know. Maybe, no, 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 but back... Maybe you can make... Back back, 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 back east, you were... Back the, east, I was known the as... The main venison cooker. The venison, <laughs> yes. I was I was the venice, the venison um, chef. That's mm-hmm. what they call me back east. They don't even know what a chef is, but it's mm-hmm. an amazing thing. Three, actually. <laughs> so a seven. All right. So, how does the uh, venison taste as a seven? Uh, immediately, I can smell that the uh, venison may be slightly charred. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the rage flames in the fire. But I thought I undercooked it. I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys eat a meal. Anyways, maybe slowly, uh, but it serves. You know, you won't go hungry tonight, so at least you can be thankful to Onus for that. It's about six thirty in the evening at this point. You guys are kind of circling the campfire right now, chilling. Uh, it's pretty quiet near the main road. Nothing going on. Oh, we long rested then. You guys are are, are about to. Uh, is there uh, anything? You guys had a eventful. Uh, yeah, 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 we, we essentially. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we, we, so g- gentlemen, we we have just come out the other end of this cave, and now we have two of these orbs that we are taking that we are taking on the road with us. Uh, Pally, uh, you you said that you had come, you'd come from the lands to uh, to serve and protect. How, how is it you feel about Onus? Onus, uh, I do believe Onus is the one true God, but I believe that the power of Onus lies in the believer. Um, There are many ways in which Onus has led to trouble and strife. Now, I, sir, am a result of this trouble and strife that Onus has led to. I would be curious, sir, what is it you think of of I, an apostate from the Far East? Do you you have do you have an opinion about me? Be, be reminded, sir, I, I, I have protected you at every turn, and I I believe I've shown my stripes as to what to what sort of what sort of ranger I am. Uh, I think you you are well enough for a believer. I thought nothing of your faith. 
or lack thereof. But now that you've witnessed the power of Onus, say, through Bethany firsthand, how can you still deny? Deny? But good sir, I do not deny Onus. I do not deny it. I see Onus's power as that which can create some margin of good, which is that which you speak of. However, I have seen much more for the potential of Onus's power to create evil. Therefore, I follow my own law. That is something that I believe we can agree on for the moment. Past several days, I too have seen a lot of the uh, strife that Onus can cause. The insect creature, all, all of this insect, if, if Onus is the one god, then surely the insect tunneling creatures that snatched up that, that fair priest in the, in, in the cave, all of that must be a product of Onus. Aloth, what say you? I come from the sun, the sun reigns supreme. You can call him Onus. We just look up to the sky, it's the same. I see. So do you recognize Onus as something other than, uh, do, you, do you see him as something that encompasses your culture or do you see him as the sun and the moon and elemental? Boy, the sun is what reigns supreme in our lands. It's, we, we worship. Aye. And so the sun is Onus in your culture? Uh, you can call it what you want, I would say, but it has many names from many people, but it is what it is. But it is this giant ball of fire. It's always the wise Aloft of seeing, seeing wiser of others. I see. Many I see. Names. Many names. I see. Well, gentlemen, I believe everyone is entitled to their own beliefs. I just ask that you respect mine. As I I I have I have shown my faith back home where we come from. We come from great great theistic belief in in the the void uh back home we whenever i say the void i'm sure you all wonder what exactly i speak of back home there are the dragger there are the wood elves there are the high elves we all live in the far east on an island in the center of this island is a void a vast void which we all bring offering to and by handling that those offerings i have through some cruel twist of fate, found myself here in Eterni, in exile. And it's all very, it's all very troubling. I don't want to go into it right now. It's all very troubling though. And that, from the day it occurred, drove me to the belief that I must go north. I must go north in vengeance, in vengeance. Gent it's getting dark now, stars are out. As can you hear the bugs. I'm getting tired. In vengeance, I trust you don't flee. I do not flee. I charge. I charge my target. Your actions do attest to that. Yes. I know what I must do. Perhaps one day, if we get to know each other better, I will share more with you. But for tonight, gentlemen, I say we've done enough. We've encountered spectral spirits. And we have seen many a church burn to the ground, and bandits, and giant insect creatures. We, we need to rest. I am, I am tired, and I, I, I would like to reflect on our, on our previous adventures in my dreams tonight. Yes, let's be done with politics. I. So, is that it? You guys ready to hit the hay? Yep. All right. Uh, are you guys all in bedrolls, separate tents? Uh, what's the sleeping room? Just have a have a visual. You can keep watch you on me as much sleep with uh mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't really sleep, I more meditate. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I meditate in a tree. I go up to a, a nice tree limb where I can brace myself and meditate so I can keep watch if anything if anything comes into my line of sight. Alright, a nice little little spot in the ground, nice little divot and just curl okay, up. So so he like kind of, so Elok kind of like uh, he, he gives his wise speeches of the worldview, and then he walks over and kind of digs a little dirt <laughs> out of the way, and just sucks over and lays on his. He's laying on his axe right now. That's his bed. That's his bed. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's uh, what's Ego's? I had the bed roll. So, 
what's it just unroll that what's it what's it made out of what kind of status are you are you flying with your bedroll uh it is uh, it's attorney issued oh uh, okay yeah yeah it would be so it's it's military grade okay not, so so not nothing, excellent no frills no, no nonsense yeah, yeah. Yeah, part of that place. It's got uh got uh attorney just on the front of yeah, it. Oh yeah, that's it. Real real simple, real simple. All right, what's uh Layden's uh, uh staying up for the first four hours? Uh yeah, I, I I will sit up in the tree and I I will watch over our our, our party uh, as I meditate. Um, while I'm meditating, can I can I detect threat? So or? for the for you cannot while you, while you're meditating you're effectively uh, sleeping. sleeping. Okay. okay. So for the first four hours you are awake by yourself, okay. Okay. Like watching. So the I, I'll keep watch. Okay. okay. Uh, and where's James? Uh, I, I say we pull old J- James's passed out ass up to the fire and yeah, uh, as let close him. as we can to the flame. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. To keep him warm. All right. Uh, is he laying on anything? Do you guys? Prepping with with anything? Uh, lay on. I check. I check. Uh, does he have a satchel or anything like carrying his equipment? Uh, I'll say. Let's see. He he said he's from the far west. His village was destroyed. I think so. He probably didn't show up with a lot. Uh, he's probably just got the good old standard bedroll from uh, from the market. So we'll, I'll prepare the bedroll. Okay, so you you just give him get him his uh, standard bedroll ready. You lay high next to him gingerly on the opposite side of the fire. Make sure you know pages don't get singed or burned in the middle of the night. Uh, and you are spending the first four hours I'm watching sure. over everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, is meditation a like elven yes. trait? Yes, it's elven, and I think half elves can do it too. Hmm. Uh, I can. I, there might be a few other races that can do it, but it's specifically known as like the elves only have to do four hours, and they're not like fully asleep. They're hey, well, trying. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a good tactical thing too as well. All right, they go. You're asleep now, right? Uh, it's late. It's probably about ten o'clock. You've been. Uh, you, let's say you guys went to bed at eight. Not a lot to do. You know, back in the day. There's no cell phones to check, so you you know you're, you're passed out at eight, pretty much. It's been a long day, long few days actually. Um, it's been a long haul. You killed a bunch of rebels, you know, immediately. Got invested with that priest Lycan in the first town. Fought that uh, giant uh, creature aberration in the cave. Came back. The, the church was burnt. Went on the road. It was a long. And fought another. Creatures. Right, you fought another one on the road. Uh, you fought undead. You, you had emotional trauma of uh, finding these people who you know you, you got connected to, and you found out they weren't alive in the first place. So you know you're fucked up. It's been been a long few days. Roll me a d20, Vega. At twenty. Okay. Let me think for a sec. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna give you a nightmare, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you're you're supposed to get a nightmare. Okay. <laughs> so with a uh, natural twenty, Ego is falling asleep, falling, falling asleep, dreaming, dreaming, deeper into the uh, the depths, and Ego finds himself uh, in years long past, and he is back in a tournament. Right now, he is um, walking down a cathedral, surrounded by his peers. It is his day of orientation, of becoming a paladin. He sees his mother and father standing directly to one side, proud, watching their son walk the aisle. And uh, he walks up to his uh, master commander, effectively runs uh, the uh, attorney in uh, academy that trains paladins and clerics that will serve in the military. He looks at you, and you are only, uh, how old is Thago now? We'll say he's 31. He's 31, so here he's only, uh, 16, 15, 16, so he's really young. Uh, uh, this is the first time he's, you know, accepting the sword. He hasn't really been trained much right now, but after this, he gets taken to the academy and taken, you know, uh, away from his family to start his path. The 
Master Commander looks down at Thago, and uh, he asks, "What? What are your oath, son?" Devotion. Devotion. What does devotion entail? Devotion to, we'll say, we'll say it's sixteen. It was yeah. devotion to Eternia and the one true God, Onus. To God and nation, then. To God and nation. And you hear a bunch of eyes, you know, from your your peers around you. And he says, uh, "These will be your first steps to walking a heavy path." Thago of attorney, one that is not made for all, but made for the just. You will walk it alone, you will find friends, and you will serve those weaker than yourself. Will you do this for attorney? I will. And with that, puts a sword on Thago's shoulders, goes one to one, and you turn around after standing up and look back on the crowd. Everybody's applauding and uh you're you're looking around you see your mother and father you stop uh when you see a woman standing there you turn away from her you know looking back at the crowd and then uh you turn back and she's a little closer now she's about halfway up in the crowd you can see that you can't see her face but she's got long dark hair your eye is drawn to her from everyone else, you don't know who this person is. Well, it's kind of familiar, but you're you're not totally one hundred percent sure. So you look away again, you look back, and now she's in front and right, like within probably ten feet of Thago. Okay. Prior to her approach, being that this is a flashback, can I detect good and evil at sixteen? It's a dream. You're in a yeah. dream right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can't. Okay. Uh, so you naturally, it, you probably couldn't do it at 16, but you know, you know the intention because mm-hmm. you're in a dream. So you detect good and evil. All of a sudden, everyone around you and the entire church vanishes and it's just you and her. She kind of looks at you a little bit and she says, you think I'm evil? Your approach, sudden and mysterious. You... That you made oaths to devotion. Correct. Where were, was your devotion for me? And then she reaches out and grabs Thago, and no. you realize it's the lady from Long Haul. Yes. The lady yeah. that you didn't call out or didn't help, but suddenly pulled back immediately mm-hmm. from you in a, in a rash of light as a reaction to this. And uh, Angel appears. Yeah. Doesn't come down, it just walks from the side of this void. And comes up to you and says, the path isn't always easy. You won't always know what to do. But know that your actions do have consequences, young pal. And we simply ask that you don't stand aside again. Can you do that? I can. Can you achieve this? And this isn't, you will not be punished if you say no now. Can you walk this path? This path, yes. With that, the lady that appeared before gets up and she simply melts back into the void. The angel looks at you and says, I hope so, pal. I hope so. Kind of echoing <laughs> the the words of uh, another elder that you heard before. And you rest peacefully for the rest of the night. Thank you. Roll a D20. Two. No, seven. Yeah, seven. Thank you. Or Aloff is a little restless during the night as well. And he also dreams at night, and he also sees a vision of his younger days. He feels the heat. He feels it's very hot and uh, dry outside. He's back in the northern wastes uh, with his tribe. He's only about eight years old, and they are marching through the desert, always 
being nomads, always traveling, always going somewhere else. You guys are coming up on what looks like a berm pile. A woman who you suspect to be your mother comes out. She has a long shawl on and to keep the heat off of her in the, uh, in the desert sands. She walks up with a torch and lights the bonfire. It's kind of late. And after that, the whole tribe kind of gathers and does a little bow and they continue forward. But when they go to rest during the night, they see torches, marauders on hills as they descend down one of the dunes and completely surround Elosh Pride. He's only eight years old at this moment, so he can't help to hold uh, a weapon right now. And he dives underneath the furs and he can't do anything as the Vikings terror, terrorize and tear through his, his community, essentially. When they get to Alof's hut, they knock out his father with the rock. And then uh, one of them comes in and just bloodies him and beats him over the head. You know, till there's basically nothing recognizable of the father. And Alof has to witness this. Two of them grab his mother and drag her out the front. And so luckily he doesn't have to witness anything, but he can hear it. The bandits ask the mother... Uh, if you can predict the future, how come you couldn't see this coming? She responds saying, well, nighttime always falls, but the sun always comes up the next day. They kind of laugh and say, well, you know, if you're no good at fortune telling, you won't need your eyes anymore. And they gouge out her eyes, put her on a carriage and drag her out to the waste. That was the last Alof saw of his truck. Oh. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> do you do anything for the four hours while these two are sleeping? In the four hours while they're sleeping, I am overlooking the campsite area, mm -hmm. and I'm using my night vision to detect if there's any animals crossing by that I can maybe perhaps like shoot to therefore like uh, get keep for bet more ration. Uh, roll a survival check. Survival check. Yeah. An 11? Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you score a rabbit. So a rabbit kind of is going by, you know, and, uh, you're sitting there very quietly without waking up anyone else. You just quietly let go of an arrow and there's a rabbit, which I believe we said serves as two rations. Yeah. You can add that. Who is waking up to take over the watch? I, I would assume it'd be Alof, since he didn't he didn't get really good sleep. Yeah. Uh, You've been tossing and turning all night, Alof. Yeah, I'll uh, I think I'm I think I've slept enough for tonight. Why don't you? I'll take over watching James. All right, may I use your burrow? My little pit. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome to it. Thank you. Much obliged. Okay. So the uh, trees are uncomfortable. Agree. <laughs> Uh, so Alok gets out of his pit and Layden dives in and it's actually pretty comfy because Alok is significantly bigger than Layden. <laughs> so we, we kind of a, a we'll little bigger, bigger pit. Thank you. And uh, you roll a d20. Three? <laughs> Bad dreams. <laughs> so you are descending deeper, deeper, dark, dark, deep into a dream as well. Uh, you're back in a hut in the Far East, but this hut has been destroyed. There's nothing around you. Uh, the, your crops have been raised. The manor's been torn asunder. Uh, this place is a wreck and you're bleeding. You're, you're fighting for your life. And a voice from the dark calls out to you, creeping, crawling bugs, skitter from the corners, the form a face, and caressing hand. And it says, you are so far from home, and I still find you. A cockroach crawls up your leg as you kick it off. Your power is wicked, of the gloom and muck. A disease you cannot cure. 
that's what you will be for me. Your whole body is swarm, uh, including your legs. Uh, you have claws, mandibles. Uh, they're buried and crawling all over you and start to crawl in your mouth, your ears, everywhere. And the voice continues and says, you cannot run, Laden. You can only spread. Ah. <laughs> Other than that, the night is uneventful as you guys wake up in the morning. Fucking hell, guys. I had a crazy dream. I I don't know about y'all. I think there's something up with these woods or something. Because I I dreamed there were bugs crawling in my mouth. And that my, my, my home village was burning. And, oh, it was, it was, it was awful. I did, uh, did, did, did anyone else experience something like this? I, I was, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. I had just bugs everywhere in my dream. Yeah, I, I didn't sleep so great either. I had some troubling, troubling dreams myself. Jeez. I'll spare you the details. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what, 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 what have you, Bago? I had a dream as well. It, it uh, regard, regarded my initiation into the uh, into the order. What of your initiation into the order? Well, I was 16 at the time. Very young. Very patriotic. Is that when most people become part of the order, is around 16? Yes, many, many paladins are. I inaugurated at a early age. Um, I did see the young woman from, from Long Hall. She approached me and her words really made me consider my faith to my oath. Oh? So it, it's certainly something that I will be keeping in mind. I do hope that we can approach the coming situations in good faith, attempt to train our altruism. At the same time. That is fine for you, Paladin. Yes, because you're a... <laughs> I, however... I, however, will have no faith and simultaneously train my morals. You may go on with Onus and do whatever things you must do in the dark around the corner. <laughs> and I... I... I choose choose a life without it. I know where I come from. I know where I've been, and I know where I'm going. It's north. Let me tell you, I have no need of faith. Well, I pray that we only have to draw our swords. It's necessary. You guys have woken up. Gonna put out the campfire, pack it down, gather up your gear, put it together, and shove off and head on down the road. Like I said, it, it's a little more civilized as you guys are making your way up the mountain. A little more snow drifts are coming in around you. Uh, and it's about a day's journey to the next town that uh, in between you guys and Skivet. So you're walking along the road. It's early in the morning. Not a lot going on. We'll say, um, is there anything you guys want to do while you are walking during this time? We heal, right? Walk yeah, you, you guys are healed. fully healed and fully rested and all the spell slumped back. Yeah, it's probably another day's journey. You guys will camp one more time before you get to the next town, but you'll reach it uh, probably by lunch the next day. Uh, but there, it, it, like I said, it's not a lot to worry about. Not a lot to encounter. I'm just pon pondering my dream. My my dream is just fucking with my head. I I have to I have to understand, like what the, what this could mean. Did you? Uh, I think it's straight pretty straightforward. The bugs we've been getting well, attacked by bugs. Oh, uh, out of out of character. Did you did you convey like your yeah. dream to did us? You, did you tell them? I love well, it. Well, they all both did. I, 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 I didn't mention didn't, the bugs basically. crawling in my mouth. Things okay. like that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Did you mention? Did you mention what you were told regarding uh, spreading some sort? Oh, of... uh, yeah, you will spread. Uh, I, w I was first. He said, "You are so far from home, and I still find you. Right. Your power is wicked, of the gloom and muck, a disease you cannot cure. 
that's what you will be for me. You cannot run, Laden. You can only spread. So, uh, yeah, I was told as we walked, I was told that I cannot run from my homelands. That, that I can only spread, just as bugs crawled in my mouth, the locusts crawled in my cheek. Now I'm infected. Got worms. Thank you. I have no idea what this means. However, I've always had a fondness for insects. Though I, I, no, I, don't, <laughs> no, I, don't, no, I don't know exactly what this means. I believe, uh, we'll say this is out of character too. Mm -hmm. I believe I have a spell in my repertoire that can cure disease. It may, it may detect it, I don't recall, but I'm probably gonna try something to that effect on you okay. just because of the knowledge that you gave me about your dream. Yeah, if you have the spell, yeah, you can definitely use it. Uh, yeah. If you could. It's not currently prepared. Oh, uh, okay. The next yeah. time we rest. Okay, so. okay. gotcha. Uh, and, and so we're I still out of character right now. Well, he, okay. Thago can tell you that in okay. character too. Like, hey, okay. I've got this spell that yeah. might cure a disease. You know, I I, right. I I have to you know I have to prepare. Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll take some time to prepare this spell, but it's something I'm willing to try. I hate it when magic gets used on. I hate all forms of magical enterprise. The the druids, the mages, the sorcerers. They are the source of all the sickness in this world. Pally, I have nothing against you. Sure as hell, nothing against nothing against Aloth over here with his brute strength. But I hate magic being used upon me. I would rather carry on. So you don't place any merit into this dream? You're not concerned at all? I may, and I may not. However, that has nothing to do with the magic that you couldn't cast on me, sir. Respectfully. Fair enough. The option is there should things take a turn for the worse. I'll remember that, as if things haven't already turned for the worse. <laughs> we were eaten by, nearly eaten by insects. <laughs> as you guys are continuing down the road, a carriage pulls up next to you guys. And it is a, uh, a dwarf that is driving it. He looks over at your band and he says, um, Y'all heading to Rock Salt? Repeat that? He, uh, he stops again. <laughs> he says, Do you hear me first time? No. Are y'all heading to Rock Salt? What's up, no. Okay, we're, we're heading down this road. Where, where y'all going to? The it's Sc Scavail. 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 Yeah, Scavail. Y'all going to Scavail? Mm -hmm. Then y'all going to Rock Salt. It's right on the way. Y'all heading up there? I suppose so, sir. All right. All right. Uh, well, y'all want to ride in the carriage? Take about half the time off. You get there by this evening. Was he was he approaching us, or did he come up behind? Um, so you guys are walking down the road, heading north. Um, he comes up. You know. You guys kind of stepped to the side as he was making his way past, and he stopped next to you guys and asked, What say y'all? Traveled with the dwarves before, actually, and they're, they can be decent folk, for sure. Of course, we're decent folk. We're always decent folk. Everybody's family to a dwarf. Y'all want to come on? Make Perry and James easier, I suppose. Exactly. That it would. Ah, uh, that's true. You have been lugging him this whole way. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all throw your buddy back in the back. I'm not going to ask any questions, and uh, we'll take you guys to Rock Salt. No charge. How about that? Ooh, it's awfully, awfully generous. Sure, why not? Why, why do you offer this generous gift to us? Uh, do you do you have no uh, do you have no desire to profit from this endeavor? Well, I'm just making my way up there. I see some folk that could use a hand, and you're dragging this fella behind you. I just figured you might need uh, a ride instead. I mean, I can just leave. You know, I was offering y'all a ride, but it sounds like y'all won't cause me trouble. I I know what y'all doing, but okay, I'll just keep on going. See y'all. Sir, right, man. wait, wait. Uh huh. One moment. I say we ride. Let, let's roll with this guy. What's his name? What's your name? Uh, my name's Gravin. You kind of you kind of look him over for the first time. First thing that stands out, um, 
he has no beard and he also has one arm <laughs> as well but he seems like a cheerful dude like uh, nothing seems to get this guy down he doesn't seem to be you know down about his situation uh, he seems particularly jolly kind of has a cloak on keep the cold off uh, since it's kind of so I like to wear some I say we give him a, I say yeah I say we go I I I'm 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 I, re- I lean over to, to Fago, grab him by the shoulder. Detect evil. No, expand the spell slot. Okay, so you, the... you detect evil? Yeah. All right. Uh, you go to detect, and nope, this guy's uh, just a normal old guy. Fuck. He's just a just a good old dude. Uh, nothing, nothing strange or off about him. Y'all coming? All right. Let's I roll. suppose so. All right. And uh, so you guys hop on the back. There's nothing really inside at all. It's, it's kind of empty uh, in the first place, so there's plenty of room for you guys to all sit in the back. Does anybody want to sit up front? I'll sit oh. up front. No, I will. Oh, okay. I'm I'll, gonna, I'll sit in the back. Okay. Converse with the door. If all right. I know a few words. Mm-hmm. All right, so Alof is up front. Uh, Layden and Thago are in the back with James, so you're hearing cluck, 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 as the horses and carriage are going down the road. Um, he goes, uh, so, uh, why are y'all having this debate? Uh, this journey. The journey, well, it's... it's road trip. What's yeah. you there? Oh, uh, it's a pretty big place. Yeah, I've been to Scavale, time or two. Uh, you got the library there. Uh, that, that's a pretty, pretty popular spot. Uh, you got a lot of bars if you just want to go get drunk. Uh, there's plenty of places to do that at. Uh, you can buy just about anything you need there, too. Uh, the most thing you gotta watch out for is, uh, there's a thieves guild that kind of runs around there, and, uh, the, sometimes the, if you get in the crosshairs of the law, they'll, uh, come down real hard on you. Other than that, Scavale's pretty cool. I like Scavale. Well? Can, can we hear him from the back, me and the Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. he's not, he's not, like, trying to hide his okay. I, I say, Dwarf, what is it that brings you to Scavale? Uh, well, I'm actually a miner. In uh, Rock Cell. I don't live in Scavale. You're a child? What? You're a child? <laughs> I'm a child? No, I'm a I'm a 120-year-old dwarf. What makes you think I'm a child? I, 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 I work in Rock Cell. Language overlap, excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, uh, I work in Rock Cell. Uh, I, was, uh, I was dropping my daughter off. She's, uh, she's heading to uh, attorney right now. Mm. Going to school. Yep. We get paid pretty good. Being a miner nowadays, so it's nice. Nice living. Yup. I used to be a lodestone. Actually. A lodestone? A lodestone. You know what that is? No. It's a mercenary. I used to be a Billy Badass. I thought I was. Till I got my arm cut off. So, now I'm a miner. They're missing an arm. Yeah. I hadn't noticed until just now. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Got cut off back in the day. Yep. How does one mine with one arm? It's the hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Uh, I, I hit it with my pick, and then I got to put my pick down, and then I got to pick it up, right, put it in the cart, and I got to pick my pick back up and pick again. It's, it's tough. But they pay good, you know, they ain't going to fire me. Workers' rights, you know. <laughs> you sound like a man of procedure. Right, yeah, yes. yeah. Luckily, I, I swung the sword a lot, and uh, so I can swing the pick pretty good. Yeah, luckily, you didn't get my sword arm. got the shield arm, so uh, it, it worked out. It worked out. Yep. But, so y'all going to Scavale, then? Well, y'all going to have a tough time getting in there. Why is that? Well, I mean, y'all, y'all know about the war we're going on, right? The war between uh, Calm? Yeah, can't them them Kelmian boys and uh, attorney. Mm. Yeah, well, Scavale's been on lockdown since uh, since things been popping off. They don't want nothing to happen to the the main city. Uh, so all the attorney and guard are pretty much kind of holed up there. Made that HQ real tough to get in right now. But there is a way. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you want to know how to get in? I think it would benefit us to know how to get in. We are headed that way after all. So, the only way to get into Scavale is you gotta have a business pass. You got a business pass that lets you through the front gate. Because that means you got something to do in there. It's already been ordained, written off, 
But you gotta get one of these passes or else they ain't gonna let you in. They'll just turn you right around. And you have one of these business yeah, passes. No, I ain't got one of these business <laughs> passes. I ain't got nothing to do in Scavale. Mm, okay. But, yeah. so, but y'all want to get to Scavale, huh? Yeah. I mean, how would you recommend we get one of these business passes? Well, there probably a few ways you can do it, but I know of one way to do it. Kind of messy. You all know that way? We capitalize in messy business thus far. Mm. So what y'all know of the lodestones? Lodestone? Yeah, this is the first we've heard of it, sir. It, well, it's a it's a pretty big mercenary group back in the uh, the the dwarven lands, Peluvian Empire. Mm. They're they're pretty hot, big hot shots over there. They're big enough that they got a couple outposts outside of the Peluvian Empire, including right here in Kemp, and one in uh, Roxop. They kind of run the joint a little bit. Uh, it's a long story. We ain't got to get into it if you don't want to. Uh, but they kind of run the joint right now, and you can work through them to get a business pass, but it's a little bit violent. I see, I see. Uh, how did you come by this information? I used to be a lodestone. Oh. Yeah, I used to work for them. Fair enough. Right, and then they kicked me out when I lost my arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty, uh, pretty, pretty tough, but, you know. That's why they're the best. <laughs> out of character, why are we heading this scenario again? You know, to, 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 to figure out like what's going on with our magic orbs. Yeah. There's a mystery of our magic orbs. We need to get to the library, I believe. Mm -hmm. And who told us? Was it Bethany that told us that? Uh, well, well Beth, Bethany is where we came by the second. No, I was like, the, I can, the, maybe. the initial gentleman that was attacked by the uh, insect creature in the first cave, I believe, is what gave us the initial the initial insight on oh, okay. the, the, the magic board. I wonder, I wonder if my position in the attorney military could get us in the gates without having to my position in charisma. Well, what did he? What did the dwarf just say? What was our business pass? We need a business pass. Business pass by dealing with the, what was the name? Huh? Who? The 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 dwarf the dwarf group people. Oh, uh, uh, lodestones. Lodestones. The lodestones. <laughs> yeah, we just go through the lodestones. But it's messy. We do have some emeralds. That's right. That's something we can maybe bargain with them. <clears throat> Back in character. Uh, excuse. So, so uh, excuse me, sir. Mr. Mr. Dwarf. Well, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dwarf. Mm -hmm. uh, we we actually have a fair bit of money. Nice, don't say that loud, loud, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we were curious, is it possible to buy our way in, surpassing this, this violent, messy option? So, the way to get this business pass is the son of the head of the Lodestones is in charge of, at the outpost up there. They got a big outpost That's where they do a lot of their housing in camp. Because, you know, they're mercenaries, so they hire all over, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they got a bit, that's their main headquarters right there in, in Rock Salt. Uh, but the reason that guy's there is he's not very good at his job. Uh, so he doesn't get to go to the front lines a lot, so he's kind of bored right now. But his job is recruiting. In order to find a means to satisfy both of these conundrums, he has created a coliseum. In rock saw. In the back corner. It's fucking wild. Uh, they built it right there. Uh, they charge money and they give taxes to the city. So they're like, yeah, whatever. You know, hey, it's cool. Uh, but he puts initiates to this fucking coliseum. And if only if they can pass it, do they get sent and join the the lodestone to get their promised paycheck and all this other good stuff, you know, insurance, mm -hmm. pretty good gig, right? <laughs> the problem is, the last step, and it's well known, is you gotta beat him. The main yeah. guy. Yeah. Kill him? I guess. Nobody beat him. Oh. <laughs> and then he beats the shit out of him, says he ain't good enough because he's trying to hire a second in command, <laughs> and then he just beats the shit out of him and says, you ain't good enough to be my second in command, and sends him to the front lines, and then they die, and he gets paid. <laughs> what's this? What's, what's, what's this? this? Stuff. What, what's, what, what's this guy's name? This Hillcast. 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 
His name is Hammer. His name is Kill. Kill Captain <laughs> Hammer. Okay. But you know what? This dude don't even use a fucking weapon. He's like a ninja. Why do they call him Frozen Hammer? That's just his last name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he just never changed it, right? But, you know, doesn't really match. But, yeah, it kind of throws him off because you think you're looking for a hammer, right? And he punches you in the fucking face and it hurts. There, God. <laughs> yeah. So, but if you beat him, uh, he'll make you second in command and he'll give you a pass. Like, he can't do anything else. It's all he's ever promised. So, if somebody actually whoops his ass, then he can't do anything else. What? Right? What is the lodestone mission statement? Mission statement? Make man money, man. That's money. it. Make bank. They don't give a shit. I mean, yeah, they ain't gonna like go out of their way to kill, you know, innocent folk or nothing like that. But nah, they're just about they're mercenaries. They just wanna make money. And attorneys paying them pretty good, so you know, they work <laughs> a lot with attorney. I think that's the one thing we do have to offer, boys. So that that's an option. Uh Rock Salt's a pretty big town. You'll see when we get there. All right, how much further we have to go before we get to Rock Salt? Uh, it's about a four-hour trip. Four-hour trip. Yeah, so we'll just talk the whole time. I'm <laughs> so excited. <laughs> hey, Lon, you got this. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna get some shut eye back here. Uh, so he turns to you and he says, "Are you Camion? I'm from the desert, the far north, Norm. Oh, Norm. Yeah, I used to do a lot of business back there. You know what I mean." Did you know? Yeah, I did. Yeah, lodestone stuff. Yeah, them uh, them, you know, barbarians up there. They like uh, some of them are cool and everything, but some of them, you know, like so, they, they ain't cool and you know. The, so they sent us in. in place. Right, they wouldn't know like where that borderline is. They creep a little bit on the Peruvian line and all that. So you know that that was my job. Uh, kind of defend that line a little bit. Yeah, tough folk, though. Yeah, tough people. Tough folk. I'll say that. What are you doing here? Traveling, journeying with these these new new friends. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that that's cool. Well, well. I mutter from under my hood. I hear they have a nice sun up there. Yeah, it's uh, it's unforgiving. I'll say that it's uh, it, it's brutal and it never stops. And when it stops, it gets so cold that you wish the sun was back. It's a miserable cycle. Unforgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I see why you left. Yeah, it's, it's a shitty place. Well, well okay. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't mean to offend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's getting so, visibly upset. It, 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 never, mind, never mind. Well. <laughs> All right then. Uh, you, you look familiar. You know. Uh, did you ever work with stones at, at any point? I've never worked with stone, but I have met dwarfs. Long. Yeah, that's all we do. We're mostly dwarves. I traveled with some dwarves for a short time. Uh huh. Some uh -huh. Years ago. Okay. All right. Uh. Uh. Near the you were. Peluvian Norin border right there. It was. Okay. Well, hiya. Uh, what's your name? Ayla. Ayla. Yeah. You don't remember me? Your name. I was straight <laughs> to you. I was right there. We were in the same back. Yeah, man. You don't remember? Did you? Maybe. Yeah. I think you had both arms. You must have had both yeah, arms. Yeah, I had my sears back then. Yeah, I had a big boat on us. I look a little more different than uh, I, that accent I do recognize. Now that yeah, <laughs> man, it's like, cool to see. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Well, I'll be damned. Yeah, you're making it down here. That's all right. That's all right. Man, you know, um, what a beautiful reunion. Yeah, you used to whoop ass <laughs> back in the day. I, I, I yeah, uh, he, he yells back, I know this guy. He used to whoop ass back in the day. Yelling back at, back at you guys. I seen him chop a man in half. Yeah, he whoops ass these days. Mm -hmm. Oh, no shit. Yeah, that, that he's still using the the act. You still using the act? I still got it. Oh hell yeah, yeah, yeah that thing's beaut. Yeah, yeah, he does a uh, he does real good with that thing. Yeah. Oh um, well, it's it's good to see you. Uh, yeah, he the, the, that guy Gilcast. Uh, he really hates uh Norm for. Oh uh, yeah, I, I really don't know what it is. That's why they had to send him back here. It's pretty fucking brutal. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd mention that around him. 
the when you when you when you go up to them. So good to know. You're kind of a racist, is uh, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, pretty racist guy. Yeah, I'm used to it. Oh yeah, yeah, and you get it a lot. This dwarf. Gets it. I mean, I get it. Yeah, I'm I'm short ass a lot of times and in, uh, in a lot of places. So yeah, yeah, but he's racist again. He's a, he's a dwarf. This guy. Uh yeah, yeah, he's a dwarf. Little short fucking hands of stone, man. Just, just out of nowhere. Yeah, he's he's pretty wild. I had a ghost in a cave telling me she didn't understand what my ears were. Really? Mm-hmm. That's weird. You tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. It was, uh, it was Farouk that brought you in, huh? Right. Farouk? Farouk brought you in. Yeah, That's we found a... you, right? What, isn't that what it was? It... Didn't, we, didn't we find you or some crazy shit like that? Yeah, I, we traveled together on the road for for some months, I believe. Or some weeks, I believe. Was it only me? Shit, I thought it was years. You tell me, cause I can't remember. I, I, I won't. I mean, you say it's weird. I thought it was. I thought we got you when you were like little, little shit. But am I wrong? No, nah, it was the. Uh, I think that came later. Right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, we you met. You were working there. You know when we met. Yeah, yeah. This guy was already like 16, 17, Is that right? Sixteen. Was about twenty. <laughs> you were about twenty. Twenty. Yep. Yeah, twenty. He was about twenty. Mm. When listen, you get your arm chopped off, you lose a lot of blood. You lose a uh, perception of time. Well, uh, you are, you are, you are live a lot moment. longer. Yeah, it's a, it's been a minute, but yeah, that back when this guy was twenty, he was killing shit back in that time. Like, yeah, you were like prime chopping people back in that day. Yeah, we fucked some people up. Fuck books. Nice to say he's continuing the tradition. Good hell yeah. But yeah, I'm a minor <laughs> now. Uh, it's it's kind of boring, you know. It's not as exciting, but the, the pay is consistent. You know, I get a, I get about a gold every two days, so you know, pays real good. Every two days, hell yeah, it's actually pretty good. All right, yeah, yeah. it's marginal, yeah, it's all right. So, all right. Yeah, it's all right. all right. Yeah, I sent my little girl to to go to school and attorney, so you know, I'm proud. I'm good. That's all I need. I'm just chilling now. Fair enough. Yeah, Fair enough, Mr. Dwarf. Right, yeah. Uh, you uh, you want to know the story about the mine, or are we going to skip all the that? The mine? Yeah, you want to know the story of the mine, or are we going to skip all that? Well, I don't know. Wait, wait, would you What's about you? the mine? We yeah. want to learn about the mine, man. It's got a pretty cool history. You want to you hear about it? Sure, let's hear about it. We've got time to kill. It's like four hours. Take this three right, hours. We've got about three hours yeah. left uh, traveling now. Uh, uh, so, the mine. Back in the day, it was a uh, it was a steel and iron mine primarily, right? So it was it was consistent work back then. But there's a lot of competition, a lot of a lot of steel and iron to be found all over, you know, attorney, a lot over kiln. So it didn't bring in the cash effectively, but it was okay. But with the invention of these kick-ass things called guns, there was a big demand for sulfur and. Guess what was in the bottom of that mine, deep, deep down in the pits? Sulfur. And all of a sudden, the money started pouring in. The artificial guild moved in. The lodestones moved in, uh, providing for contracts and protecting deliveries and shit. So that's when the mine started booming. And that's how I was able to pay for my little girl's college tuition. So yeah, town's doing great. Rock salt's awesome. Just, you know, don't be a mercenary. Just mine. <laughs> <laughs> Even with one arm. <laughs> what? <Maybe. laughs> I said that'll work, but you know, hey, at least they're paying me. Hey. They don't bother me none either. I only gotta do half the quota. How do you feel about onus? Onus? <laughs> That's a weird fucking question. Uh I ask a lot of weird fucking questions. Uh I don't know. I, just, I guess he's cool. I got a church. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's <laughs> alright. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm hmm Understood. Yeah? Okay. You alright? Yeah, no. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. The latest change is trying to run like a little start drop, poisoning an arrow. Little, little drop of sweat. <laughs> little drop of sweat comes off the chin. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just. It's okay. It's okay. But yeah. Uh, so, and, you, and you don't have one of these licenses on you. No, man. Okay. I, I, just, I just work the mine, man. Yeah, that's all I do all day. Yeah, I get weekends off, though, so that's cool. I go fishing uh, at the nearby frozen lake, put a little hole in the ice and everything. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's nice and peaceful out there. Yeah, get away from the mine a little bit. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you hunt? Yeah, I hunt. Do you, do you know anywhere we could procure some guns? Procure some guns? Shit, Ropsalt's got a great shop. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. oh, do you have any, do you have any guns in this? I'm sorry. Do you have any guns in this uh, carriage that we're in? You a cop? A cop? Uh, what's, a, what's a cop? A cop. What's that mean? I don't know. I guess it's your best. I'm an you, elf. Mr. Turner, not you a cop? <laughs> I'm an elf. Okay. Yeah. Elves could be cops. Y'all cops? No. We are not cops. Okay. Ranger mm. of the Far East. I'm headed north. Roll the persuasion check. Persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> it's like borderlands. <laughs> Yo, oh. fucking. Uh, uh, 14. 14? Yeah, I got a musket. I keep it under my seat. My. Uh, no, no reason. No reason. Can can I stealthily attempt to steal his musket? Ooh. Mm. Uh, you... Like let's say how, how are you going to steal let's, it? Let's say let's say it's under his seat. It's under his seat, but we're but we're in a, we're, but we're in a carriage. It, let's uh -huh. say it's it's open back carriage. Is that fair? Okay. And and it's under it's under the seat, so it's like under like the seat and like a little like uh, it's like kind of pinned up. Uh, and, I, and I hadn't noticed. Because I would only say that the carriage. No, I'm seeing it built. Is that it's closed all the way on the front, and okay. then there's a chair on the top, right? And then it just kind of hangs like over and there's a little platform right there okay and that's essentially where he's got his musket so that's the only thing i'm not going to say no but like mm -hmm. your, your effect your one thing i'm trying to stop doing is say effectively because i said it about 40 fucking times in the last that was session so i'm just saying <laughs> anyways uh so i want to say that it's closed off when you're in the caravan you can't just reach up underneath right there from okay. where you guys are at. So what I do, like right behind let's it. say, okay, are you guys cool, uh, out, of, out of character, are you guys cool with me if I make an attempt to steal this musket? So, I'm conflicted. <laughs> yeah, I haven't discussed it before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, this is one of those things. That's a good old boy. <laughs> yeah, but what's he gonna do? He worships, he worships fucking Onus. Like, yeah, just, I, you know, I, I, I think well, he has something of value. Well, it's, it's, it's my old family, buddy. I'm not going to just I, let you rob. I won't hurt him if I can avoid it. He, he also has direct contact with the Lodestones. Yes, but we've already gotten the name of the Lodestone we need. We are about to deal with them directly. Uh-huh, yes, but we're still three hours out from the village. I don't know if I'm allowed here to rob my old traveling, buddy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying you're three hours out of town on carriage. It's going to get long. I actually know this dwarf better than I know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. So I'm, I'm settling down. I'm just let my sweats clear. Up. It's like because. Oh what? Okay. Uh, so tendencies. But yeah, if you're looking to buy a gun, they got a shit ton up in in uh, uh, Rock Salt. Yeah, it's it's a pretty big trading port. You can get a lot of shit up there. What do those generally run? Uh, ooh, uh, what the muskets? Sure. Oh man, the muskets. You're kind of they're a little steep. Uh, it's about four hundred gold for one. I sure you don't want to rob her. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're they're a little pricey, but damn, they do with the fucking trick, man. Blow that shit right up. Bam, they're cool. What is the ammo usually? How's the market these days? Well, um, the uh, it's pretty cheap because you're right here where they actually mass produce it. Uh, that's the whole reason why they got this mine out here. So you mm -hmm. can get bullets pretty much. Uh, copper on the fucking pound, man. Yeah, it's cheap. Makes sense to me. Yeah. And as far as making money goes, are there? Do you know of any opportunities in uh, Scavale? In Scavale or Rock Salt? Rock Salt. In Rock Salt, uh, yeah, there's a, there's quite a few things up in uh, Rock Salt. Like I said, it's a it's a fairly decent sized little town, and you got the uh, it's got a pretty big church. Uh, the the church is to get dedicated to the Saint in Uh He's the the Saint of the Forge and Fire. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. It's like a lot more neat than your, your standard owners church, right? They got a lot of anvils and they're a lot of metal. So it's it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty uh pretty dark. Uh so you got the you got the church right there. The Artificers Guild is also there. Uh so they're they're kind of uh 
do their own thing. They're third party. They work with the mines. They work with the tourney. They work with the lodestones. But ultimately, they're their own kind of like business enterprise. You know, they, they kind of decide what they want to do. And then you got the Giannis Guild. You ever heard of the Giannis Guild? No. Oh, really? They're based everywhere. All right. Roll a uh, history check. The Giannis Guild. Now, all of you roll a history check, actually. I rolled a 14. 14? Okay. Eight. I rolled I've never heard of reading. I rolled a 21. Okay. Um, so, they go and Layden remember that the Giannis Guild was the local Kelmian Guild that the lady worked for that was huh, back in Long Haul. She was the head of the Giannis Guild. And what they are is they they deal with Kelmian farmers and try to make them a guild, more business-like, even though they're residential farmers. Uh, so that's the purpose of the Giannis Guild. So you remember that, you know, from your meetings in Long Haul. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he continues and says, so you got the Giannis Guild, uh, they deal with a lot of local stuff, a lot of local farmers and markets, stuff like that. But they're always needing work done. So you can go see them. Uh, yeah, I already said the church, the, and the artificers and Giannis and the lodestones. Yep. Yep. That's about your, uh, your options, especially if you want to get a, uh, business license. Those are going to be your best bet. Out of character. Mm-hmm. Um, so he said he was heading to attorney. Yeah. Um, he said he's he's heading to he works in Rocksaw. He was dropping his dog right. off who was who was heading to it hurt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, he's coming back from doing that. So like the conflict between attorney and Kelm, mm-hmm. uh is there like a, a space between the borders where it's contested? There is a um a massive I don't want to call it a river because it's bigger than a river. It's it's more like a it's running like a street. Right? Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. Uh, that cuts in between um, attorney and camp. Like they can't see each other from uh, beach to beach, right? They aren't mm-hmm. that close, but they are within roughly two hundred nautical miles of sea travel. So I mean, it's they're not like. In wide the, in ocean steps. Across. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, you can sail across mm-hmm. and get there in, in a reasonable amount of time. Kelm is Kelm. The whole nation is Kelm. Oh. But it's subor- uh, officially it's subordinate of, of a turn, right? Mm-hmm. So they kind of, they own the country uh, as a monarchy. They own it. It's theirs, but they, they govern it from their their nation so now, satellite nation so they install governors and stuff like that and now they're encroaching on like Keldian values and well so th- this has been going on for a long time like it's been going on for a thousand years uh, mm-hmm. uh, as long as any Keldian can remember attorney rule Kel. the thing is is that attorney did not stop at Kel. attorney has spread way past Kel and has influenced um, that far reaching that you, unless you're on the inside working with the official government, you don't really know how far the attorneys have spread. But in spreading that far, they have lost centralized power in, in attorney and within the nation right next to it. It's, they, they're not nearly as strong with the presence as they were, uh, a hundred, uh, to 150 years ago. Like Rome. <laughs> And so now the Kelmians, um, you guys have learned this from the basket weaver uh, mm-hmm. and a couple other people that you've talked to, that this Aaron Tychus has taken this opportunity. Like he, he's, he's gotten a band together and um, they found success because they found that there are these old towns, these old villages that all they have defending them are these churches with a halo that now because nobody's there if you can sneak in uh without raising the alarm you can shut down the churches you can take over the towns because there's not enough guards anymore and so that's that's the campaign aaron titus has been running he's been doing this guerrilla warfare hitting these villages and random spots taking out these churches and uh, basically 
attorney slowly losing territorial power. And the rebellions are happening because of their control over magic? Magic, taxes, and way of life, everything. Like, um, they, Kelmians are, are hyper authoritarian. Uh, well, the Eternians are. Uh, well, they, they've, they've encroached on a position. Like, it's not that they're tyrannical or they're, they've got slaves or, you know, they're evil or anything, but now the taxes are getting a little heavy. Um, Helm still isn't getting their fair share. General unrest. Yeah, it's unrest that the relations have tense. This is a thousand years going on now. It's not like this is the first time that relations have have intensified. Like, this is just another instance of that to to the nth degree now, because attorney has decided to spread way past its borders at this point. Gotcha. Um, So... That's the that's the social history lesson of, okay, yeah, of the homebrew. He has just explained your options for you know employment and seeking one of the passes. Anything else you guys want to ask him for you pull up? Chances I think I or, or to shave. Look better with the beard, man. No, 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 no. Recognize uh, yes, yeah. why I shave? Grow well, out, man. Grow I, out. I guess you're not a you're not a you're not full Faluvian, are you? No. no offense, no offense, me. I mean, obviously you're tall, right? You get to be tall, so you're not full to lose you. Not right? Norm. I'm yeah, you're 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 from the desert. Everyone Norm. is tall to a dwarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't. I heard it before. Anyways, so they're pretty tough in the Faluvian Empire, right? They're pretty rigorous, and when you are seen as unuseful, as it's Norm, uh, you are forced to shave your beard. Yeah. And if you don't, somebody else can shave it for you. So it's uh yeah, it's pretty pretty tough, but you know, like I said, I get benefits and so it's all good. All good. I just gotta keep my beard shaved. And maybe leave me alone. Fair enough. Why'd you leave your town? Ah. Uh, don't you got people miss you too? I do. I, I had a, a very troubled past. That's what led me to run from from the desert. That's uh, it's where we met the first time, I believe. Yeah. I was running. Where are you? No running idea. from things. Like, I had no idea. I thought you were just making money, man. You were uh, always quiet. <laughs> you just fucking came up and cut people's heads off, and you know, you'd eat something, go to bed. I didn't know what your deal was. <laughs> well, man, that's tough. It's a long story. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, you know, it seems like you got pretty good buddies. Yep. Well, that's good. Good. Keep your buddies close. You never know. There's a lot of crazy asses around nowadays. Mm-hmm. And uh, with that, rest of the time passes. Um, it's sundown again. You guys pull up to Rock Salt. It's a it's a mining town, but it's fairly busy and fairly upkept. Like it's not like completely dirty or unwashed streets or anything like that. It, it's it's organized. There's a uh, specific trolleys that go from the mine shaft, like back to the artificers guild. And from there it heads off and goes to attorney and ships off that way. So it's an organized town. Uh, y'all driver described, you can see a massive Coliseum off in the Northwest corner of town, kind of hanging out by itself over in the Southwest corner of town is the artificers guild. Um, and where it looks like they process a lot of the ore that comes in from the mine. You have the main cathedral in the center of town. Uh, it looks like a blacksmith and an alchemist over here, and the Giannis Guild up at the top corner of town. And he drives you guys in and he says, uh, well, uh, is there anybody y'all looking for before I head off back home? I want to go see the blacksmith myself, just to make sure that my gear is good. Go see the blacksmith? Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, so, the blacksmith, uh, you see the cathedral in the center of town, he's over a little east of that. Uh, you'll see a big forge right there. Yeah, he's got a little cart track that goes from the mine right to him. It's his own personal stuff. Yeah, sure, he, I can see it with my cool. elf eyes. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, yep. Uh, well, alright then. I'll, uh, I'll see y'all later. Take it easy. He goes off on his carriage, drives off in the distance. People milling about, uh, getting around to the end of the day. Miners leaving the mine. They got 
but covered in dust, but, you know, they're talking, you know, heading to the local bar and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, I uh, came into town. James is still in tow. Uh, you guys were just kind of dragging him along again. It's good to say we need to, like, fashion the, I mean, what do you call them? A stretcher? A gurney? Yeah, a gurney. I was thinking nice. earlier, but right here. Yeah. Uh, Alos, big and strong. I think he can he can carry James yeah, over. So we we get we have anything go down, he just flops him on the ground. He's been fine so far. I think he'll be good. He keeps he keeps dreaming. He keeps dreaming and saying like tie tie something, and I I don't know what that means. But we maybe <laughs> one day we we'll, we'll figure maybe it out. Maybe we should try to come up with something though. I mean, you guys can always find an inn or something. To yeah, like, I was, I, I was yeah. kind of thinking that we just dump him somewhere. That costs money. So I do need. We have one. <laughs> out of character, I do need a long rest because I expended a spell slot, uh, detecting good and evil. Okay. Okay. Why? Why don't me? Okay. Here's what I say. I I believe that uh, Alof and I we're we're feeling pretty good. So uh, we we'll, we stop off at the end. Alof and I'll grab a drink. Uh, Fago will drag James up to a room. We'll rent a room for the evening. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Fago and James can uh, head up up to the room. Uh, let Fago catch himself a little rest. Well, we'll we'll wait, I guess, yeah, until we're back done in. exploring. Um, but we can dump uh, James off. I will say we need. Uh, I especially, I'm, I've used it. every one of my health potions, so we definitely. I need to re up on those. Christ Jesus. Okay, we'll head by we'll the alchemist. Shield. Possible, do you don't have a shield, right? I do have a shield. Oh, okay. Then okay. All right, so we we can head by the alchemist. We can, and then we can uh, we can set our boy up with some new new uh, sp- uh, potions, and uh, we just drop James off at the end. We, perhaps we even grab a drink. We certainly need a gun. I certainly need a drink, and don't talk to me about a gun. I had a recommendation, and no one went along. <laughs> it wasn't the right time. Do we need a gun? Oh, hell yeah. What if we come across guns? This is like... This is like... We're gonna come across some bandits. Yeah, but they're flintlocks. Like, honestly, he would be more effective than a gun. I mean, uh, yeah, he's... Delph would be more effective with a bow than a gun, I, for one. And so would... Think of the intimidation factor. The... Say. Oh, I got shot at, and I didn't much like, I didn't much care for it, so. Exactly. <laughs> well, we each, I have 220 gold. He said they run about 400 gold apiece, I believe. I'd right. be willing to for pull almost what? everything. For, for a musket? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. 400 gold. So I was at 220, I'm, I have 220 gold. I am not trying to spend all of my gold on it. I'd, I'd be willing to pull as much as I'm able. I have a pistol. Do you? Uh, I do. I sure do. Oh, what? Yep. yep. Yeah. What are the stats on it? I mean, uh, there is an, a dot, I have nine ammunition, and uh, it is a. Uh, I don't know if this means anything to you. It's one d10 plus two. Um, if I need to. What's your error? What are your errors? Arrows? Uh, nigh infinite. Nigh infinite. Or damage. Uh, one oh, uh, so that is a one d8 plus three. Two extra damage for bullets. Mm-hmm. Yep. With the pistol. Look, I am a wood elf. I have trained my entire life with a bow. I appreciate having a weapon that does not give my position away. Either the pally or you, Mr. Alof, I would l- lend you this pistol for about 20 gold. <laughs> pistol and the ammo? Pistol and the ammo. A whole kit for 20 gold. I do feel I need a pussy. Yeah, I don't, I don't want it. I, I, I'll give you 20 Cash gold. out. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your business. You said lend. It, the oh. lit lock, it does 1d10 damage. Um, you aren't proficient in it, but you can Ooh. train it. Okay, so you guys are going to the blacksmith or alchemist? I would say the blacksmith. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I have almost no need to go to the blacksmith. We don't need to get drunk first, do we? <laughs> Mm. Perhaps you can How about something it? in the book. That was a good point. How but... about it? How about it? Yeah. All right. I say we hit. I say we hit the bar, gentlemen. We've been on a fine adventure, the three of us. We 
We, uh, J- J- James, this has been, he's been we'll doing, drink one for him. We'll drink one for him. That's right. Alof, you can, you can drink one for James and we will be all the better, I say. And, uh, we, we, we flop James down in the upper part of this. So we head to the end. Wait, that's what I say. He didn't need potions. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, we can, we can, yeah, yeah. we, we will talk it over, over our, our, our ale. Okay. So you guys probably go to the, to the uh, end. The end. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the end's called the, uh, Rusty Hatchet. Rusty Hatchet. Uh, you walk in, it's uh, got a lot of mining paraphernalia around the walls, a lot of picks and ore and, you know, pictures of the mountain and, you know, people shaking hands, stuff like that. All the miners are kind of pouring in now. They're getting off work. So uh, it, it's busy in the in the end. It's like all kinds of people, uh, humans, dwarves. Yeah, humans, dwarves, they, they all kind of, kind of uh, uh, there's a lot more dwarves centralized here than you guys have noticed anywhere else, but. That's because of the mod. Yeah. They, they, a lot of them were there. I'd like to approach the bar and try to get the bartender's attention. They, uh, okay, so the uh, bartender, uh, it's a dude, bald head, kind of burly looking guy, uh, finishes making a drink, directs his way over to you, says, what are you having? Busy night. An L for the three of us. L for the three of you, it's going to be seven copper. Seven copper. Yep. You've got it, Fago. Put it on the tab. Break it down on the tab. Give you guys it. All right. Have us a drink. Blood blood. Blood blood. Blood blood. Hmm. Y'all get in a room to drop off. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should drop off. Alok, you've been dragging this this poor boy yeah. <laughs> all this time. Uh, I say I say we put him up in a room, we put him in a nice bed, and uh, then we can go take care of our blacksmithing, alchemy, and so on. Perhaps even go to the Colosseum, or whatever we're doing. Perhaps we should even lock away the book. It's a good idea. Um, however, to leave the book well, might be... That is fair. Might be folly. Traps. Do we have traps? You have traps. Do I have traps? I have... I do not have traps. I know, right? Um, perhaps... Okay. Uh, so I do have... I do have the, the Ankeg liver. Mm-hmm. Perhaps, could I craft that into a trap? Is that possible? Using yeah, something well, else? Yeah, sure. Okay, so like, let's what say... What do you want to do with it? I, 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 what I want to do is I want to... So, let... So... Uh, just moving past the idea that we get uh, um, James a room, mm-hmm. and then we, we are upstairs. Okay. Uh, so what I want to do is I would like to set up a trap where uh, there's a tripwire. I use some of my rope. I, I cut off like three feet of rope, and and I uh, tie it around like two to the edges of the door at the foot level. And then uh, above that, I take the ankeg. Um, I take the ankeg poison and I apply it to an arrow. And I uh, I set that above the door like a home alone, and and I apply <laughs> I apply like a uh, I apply like some weight to the back of it. Um, I apply like a actually no let's let's take away let's take away the arrow. Let's apply a, a short sword. Okay. Uh huh. And then we will uh, we'll, I I tie that up to the roof, okay. uh, to the ceiling of the to the ceiling of the room, and uh, th- that is attached with a tripwire to the same cord that runs across the, the bottom of the door. Uh, so if if it trips, a, a, a short sword with poison comes down, hits the person that comes We may even need to put the orbs there. I don't want to put all my stuff... Well, look, we have James and the book here. <laughs> I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. It's an old saying where I'm from in the Far East. Don't put I, all I, your... I do know that. Yeah, too. Or, you know, yeah, yeah. it's an old, old saying from the Far East. Remember this trap, because we're going to get <laughs> fucked up on our way back. We all <laughs> learn to make the traps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, so yeah. yeah, I'll say that you're successful in doing that. That's fine, just make sure to remember you only have one short sword. Yep, let me do away with that real quick. At the moment, um, okay, so Layden sets up the trap. You guys leave James and Kai and the orbs all nice and cozy. And well, you, not the orbs. Not the orbs. Okay, so you guys are carrying the orbs mm-hmm. on you. You leave James and Kai all nice and cozy and leave outside the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now it's uh, evening time. Speaking some potions. Yeah, and if y'all want to go somewhere else, I will just head to the alchemist. 
I'd like to go to the alchemist as well. I could benefit from a, uh, a potion or two. So I have some uh, expendable income. Okay. Might even put one on you boys for the house. So you guys uh, walk into the alchemist shop. Mm -hmm. It's an older, frazzled woman. Uh, she's been working all day. So, uh, yes, I can help. I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to interrupt you. Are you closing soon? We wouldn't want to be a bother. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. All right. No worries. Good enough. All right, ma'am. We need we need uh, health. Po My boy here. He needs health potions. I I as well need a health potion. Okay. Uh, uh, perhaps two. Two. Is there okay. a bulk deal? Uh, I can give you uh, four for fifty. Four for fifty. How much is one? Uh, one is going to run you two. Yeah. Four for fifty. All right. Yeah. I'll take four. I'll take four for myself. Uh, I'll take four as well. Oh, okay. All right. And I, I, I'll, I'll buy Alofs for four. I think I have two still. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy. I'll buy uh, Fagos. So Alof can afford his own. Okay. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yep. That sounds good to me. Four health potions for fifty gold. Okay, so I'm gonna do minus. How much for two? How much for two? Uh, We'll do uh, two for 30. It's a deal. You want to do two for 30? Two for 30. I'll get the blacksmith may have some use for that. Perhaps so. Yes, emeralds are of great use, especially not in this town, though. So, uh, uh, can I? Maybe What's a steel, steel mines? I guess. Mostly mine gun. Or iron mine. Yeah. Perhaps there could be a can I Can I entreat you all with any scrolls, magic scrolls, or anything? Uh, Else. Yeah, what other wares? Well, I've got a couple different potions available. I've got a, uh, I've got a potion of uh, what's called haste. Uh, make, yeah, make it a little quick. Uh, that, that sounds pretty popular, uh, especially over at the uh, Coliseum Boys over there. As well as I've got a potion of bark skin. Makes you a little tougher if, uh, if you're looking for something like that. As far as scrolls, I can do anything real basic. That you might be looking for. Tell me what you want. I could probably do it. You say I'll tell you the price. You say the haste is popular at the yeah, Coliseum. It's pretty popular. Mm. People like that one. Frozen Hammer likes it himself. No, uh, no, you know, uh, we sure. can't, can't get into who buys what, but it's a popular item. They like it up there. I'll give it to you for uh, let's say uh, 150 gold. Let it go to you. For one scroll? For one potion. I mean, hey, it gets fast. What are the scrolls you're on? Any cheaper? Uh, the scrolls, depends on what you get. Uh, I can give you a scroll of grease for roughly 70 gold. Something like that. Uh, if that gives you an idea about the prices. I wave my hand at the notion of magic. Walk outside. <laughs> Mac, Mac on the nearest female dwarf. Okay. All right. He's bearded. She's uh, hey, take <laughs> what hey, you can get. Hey, shakes the beard a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'll do an amputee and she will have yeah. to shave, actually. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you guys want to buy or purchase? At the I'll buy a. Uh, I'll buy one potion of base. One potion of base. 150 gold. Yeah, 300. Yeah. Gold? Is that all you guys do at the Alchemist store? I'm outside already. All right, you guys are outside. It's still evening, but you still got time before all the shops close. Said to the blacksmith, "How you boys feel?" All right, so we move on to the blacksmith. All right, it's a big old boy back there, sweaty, hot, kind of cooling down the fire a little bit. Man or dwarf? Towards the end of the uh, man. All right, dude. Um, how can I help you? Uh, I'm, I'm in search, so I, I have been carrying this longbow since mm. the Far East, as well as my mm. armor. I'm curious, sir, what is it that you have on offering for us here? Mm. Well, I offer a lot of services. I got pretty much anything standard you could look for, armor-wise. Plate mail, chain mail, short swords, long swords, whatever you need. Uh, but, for a fee, can't do a lot of them, but I can work on a single weapon. Take me an evening, cost a little bit of gold, but I can make it back. I have a standardized longbow from the Far East. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything on offer, on offer 
uh, that would perhaps be better than anything that you could upgrade. Mm. No, I, I really don't. Like I said, I, I mostly have basic equipment. Uh, but if you give me your bow, you give me one night. A night. One night. Got material to do. I, I, I can only have time to do one. It takes a lot of time. And I'm only one guy. But I can improve one single weapon, including the bow. Make it a little bit better. If you, but costs a little money. You know, as anything would. <laughs> I step back, talk to my boys. Listen, they go. They go. Has to uh, sleep to restore his uh, spell slot. Whatever the fuck that means. And <laughs> I... I, and so, so if I need to, to get my uh, weapon upgraded, or if y'all need to get anything upgraded, uh, we could benefit from from this uh, transaction that takes an overnight process. Yeah, sounds. Yeah, sounds like who's weapon? I'm I'm putting my longbow in. I only have one short sword because the other one is a, a booby trap. Like I said, I can only work on one weapon a day. That's it. Oh, only one at a time. Yeah, that, that's the reason. It takes a lot of time. I'm only one guy. I don't have a whole factory here. So, I can work on one weapon. So, whose weapon are we looking at today? Oh, I guess. All right. Oh. I le- I'll lend you my Let me bow. look at it. Let me look at it. Is this, uh, is this from where you're from? Just calm down. Yes, it's from the Far East. Yes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Flop yeah. it down on the table. How much are you charging me to upgrade this, this bow? This is a real nice bow. Oh, Thank man. you. Ah, Thank hey. you. Oh, man, it's been a while since I've seen one of these. I can do it. I can do it for 200 gold. 200 gold. I can, I can, I can shine this puppy up. Make her sing like you've never seen. Fair, sir. Fair. But I am from the Far East, and uh, back okay. home, I've seen I've seen work like what you have here before, and I mm-hmm. would say at the very most, the work you do here is probably worth a hundred gold. Uh, perhaps I could influence you to yes. uh, to do that to do this same work for a hundred gold. Uh, given I could do this just as easily for us, which I'm headed back to after today, by the way. Roll a persuasion check. I really feel for you, sir, but it's the end of the day. I'm getting ready to close shop. I'd be doing you a favor a little bit. Uh, my price still stands. I, I can lower it down to 175 and that's that's as far as I can go down to help you out a little bit. I have 140 gold, sir. Oof. What say you? Uh, maybe I don't do your friends have 35. Maybe you got something you can give me. We can make a trade. Well, sir, so I actually have, mm-hmm. now note, uh, whenever I say 140 gold, I'm referring as a sum total of other things. That, and now I, I actually have these beautiful emeralds, pride from the eyes of the undead. Mm. And these have been said to be worth at least 20 gold a piece. Uh, back, back in the north, uh, Alof, he's from the north. He actually would get back me up on this. These are worth at least twenty gold a piece in the far north. If not thirty, if not thirty. Thirty. Okay. Roll another uh, persuasion check. Eight. Eight. Uh, roll it with advantage because you're getting help from Alof. Uh, with advantage. Yeah. Uh, what, what, so you just roll it again. Oh. Okay. Ten. Ten. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I'd say they're worth about fifteen each. Pretty nice, sir. These uh, these are from the undead. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you out here. I said they're worth 15. Yeah, sir, easy. I'm, I'm trying to help you out twice as much as what you say you're helping me uh, out. I don't, I don't know. I don't um, know. I don't know. Uh, is there any... any can, can y'all help your boy out anyway? Or? I'll throw you a few gold. Alright, there we go. There we go. Alright, alright. So, one, 175. 175. 175. Okay. How much you need from me? I need... Uh, 35 gold. Okay. So all your emeralds are gone? <laughs> yeah, it's all gone. All, right. all of my shit's gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let me hold on to your bow for tonight. You can come back first thing in the morning. I'll have it ready for you. You're almost out of weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till you see my bow tomorrow. <laughs> you ain't getting that back. I'm just going to put broke on here and underline it. Okay, um, <laughs> does anybody else want anything at the blacksmith? Mm-hmm. You can buy something, but you can't make anything. Or work on anything. Can you clean this bloody tabard that I have? Uh, well, I'm, uh, 
It's a tavern. I'm a I'm a blacksmith, unfortunately, son. I'm not a dry king. Is there anyone in town that could? Uh, <laughs> well, um, you might could. If you, if, when you go back to the inn, they probably have a bath or something that you could use to, to clean the tablet. I, mean, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine they would. You got anything that's not a weapon? You got anything? I have armor. Yes. Any other? Anything else? Any utility? Uh, no, I, I, I have the javelins, the, the spears and such, but uh, that, that's mostly what I carry. What, what are you looking for? I'm just... Anything interesting, really? Now, I'm, I'm armed to the teeth as is. Uh, well, yeah, you seem you seem well prepared, uh, but no, I don't. I don't have anything else. No, you have nothing gotcha. special off the menu. <laughs> but perhaps you could offer us fair travelers who have a great deal of gold, mind you. I mostly supply miners, and I mean children. No, oh. the ones that get more, <laughs> I should say. Um, but, I didn't even register it. So uh, I, I mostly make simple, simple craft work here. Uh, r- real simple arms, but the the basics. I can get you whatever you may need. Whetstones, anything like that. Whetstones. I can sell you a, a whetstone. Sure. Is that an actual item? Because I know weapons do break. I think that is a real item. Yeah, it is it's an item. Uh, at the end of a short or long rest, you may sharpen a single non-magical melee weapon that deals piercing or slashing. That's a goodie. Or up to five non-magic arrows, granting them a one plus one to damage for Ooh. the next eight hours. Yeah, yeah I got eight one stone. Let me get how many you got? Uh, well, I'll, I'll just get one. You, you just want one? That'll be two silver. Oh, shit. Deal. We could fucking stock up. Christ oh, Jesus. Yeah. Man, man's giving it away. We're losing money not buying them. <laughs> Two silver each per whetstone. How many you got? Well, uh, I've got about uh, twenty back here. Damn, oh, Jesus. Hold on, let me, get, let me actually get five of them. Five of them. That'll be ten silver. Okay. I'll have, I'll have five as well. Five, ten in silver plus one for eight hours. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Really good. Really yeah, good. you can only start, You can only do it on a rest section. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. All right. Uh, so you guys are out of the blacksmith now. Uh, it's nighttime. Where do y'all go? Also, with the West Stones, every hit, every successful hit lowers, reduces an hour. Takes an hour off the eight hour. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's how it does it, apparently. Uh, so, what did we say? We go back. Listen, boys, I had an epiphany. What do you say? We go back to the end. We very carefully tiptoe over my, my, my genius booby trap. And we take a rest in this, in this room, a long rest. Where we can then w- use our whetstones, and uh, we Fago uh, gets his uh, gets his skills back, and then we decide where we're going to go in the we should, But they the whetstones only last for an hour, eight hours though. Right, right, but, but we're going. Well, yeah, we we'll we'll do it in the morning. I Maybe think. we should plan on getting into combat or uh, going to check. I'm going to say the the whetstone when we use it, it lasts all day. Because it makes okay. no sense when you sharpen a weapon. And then just dulls. dulls. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a good thing, no, right? That's, that seems weird. Uh, so, just, just remember to keep track, you know, of the... Uh, of the I do have one suggestion. We'll say it lasts for maybe two hits. So odds are we'll be in combat within the Coliseum by this time. No what makes you think that? <laughs> yeah, we need to, yeah, we need to figure... We need to learn more... About this. So, my suggestion is perhaps there's currently a contest going yeah, we can on. Yeah, go spectate first or yeah, something. Perhaps we can spectate. Get, get us a seat, watch the show. It's a good idea. Okay. Um, let's say you guys uh, come back down stairs from the inn where you guys stopped in and start asking about the Coliseum. And yeah, fuck yeah, they got evening shows, they got uh, lunch shows, yeah man, it's awesome, yeah, 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 there's a lot of people going right now. Uh, as you walk outside of the inn, you see a line of uh, <laughs> bolt from the town, from the mines and stuff like that, heading up towards the northwest, where you see the Coliseum like, lit up. So, you guys are walking that way? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. so we're following the crowd, yeah, we're, we're sifting through... I'm, I'm I'm macking on the little the little boy bearded yeah, dwarves where I can. Dwarf, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Bearded dwarf, please. So, you guys uh, make your way to the Coliseum. Uh, 
it's past the lodestone uh, bead hall, which is uh, kind of like the office area, which is right outside the Coliseum. And you guys walk in, big crowd in the bleachers surrounding, and you guys watch as there is a group of uh, four down in the pit right now. Uh, it's kind of snowed in a little bit, so there's drifts of snow on the arena that they're actually fighting in and falling around. So there's hearing and jeering going on from the crowd, and it seems they are fighting, looks like a, a giant goblin kind of creature. Uh, like this thing, it, it looks like it's been beaten up and chained. Like a, day, like a, but like a cave troll from Lord of the Rings? Not, kind of, not as big. Not okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bigger than a regular man, okay. but it's not as big as a cave troll. Like a Yurikai. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind okay. Of in between. And it, it's fierce. The the battle's fierce. Uh, they're going back and forth. It's swinging. That's the thing it's got. Uh, it's got a giant massive sword. Okay. Uh, it looks like there's a fighter ranger uh, wizard kind of mix uh, down there. And they're all dodging, getting out of the way. The uh, orc, giant orc, we call it. Mm-hmm. And they eventually, the ranger pulls back up. Orc goes down. But the crowd goes crazy. Woo! Yeah, everybody's going nuts. Fuck and, him up. Uh, the announcer goes, and now for the final round. And, you know, the whole the whole crowd gets quiet, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's repeated. And entering the the fray, kill cast frost hammer, and like this, uh, it, like for all the fanfare that's going on, it's just like this dude in a simple robe just kind of walks out, right? Like uh, he 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 just kind of comes out and walks through the uh, the middle of the 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 arena, and you know, crowds going crazy and everything like that. The the fighters, you know, they kind of encircle a little bit kind of stops for a moment, fight does, and you see the mage first or anything else. But looks like they're casting a magic missile. Goes and casts the magic missile. All of a sudden, this dude in a robe just goes, whoo, 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 fucking dodges out the way and immediately is in front of the wizard and hits him three times. Doo, 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 and wizard's down, fucking on the ground. And the crowd goes fucking nuts. Ah, go guys. And the, the fighter and the ranger are like, oh shit, like they, they couldn't, they couldn't, they didn't have enough chance to save, you know, their other member, right? And so now they're like, oh fuck, you know, what do we do now? And so like he kind of sees the hesitation for a moment. All of a sudden this dude pops in front of the ranger, hits him with the fucking elbow, kicks him in the knee, breaks his leg, and the ranger's on the ground, fucking screaming on the ground. And it's just the fighter. Now the fighter's fucking scared of shit, right? Like, this dude is <laughs> whooping ants. And dude just fucking uh, walks up, and before he can even reach the fighter, the fighter runs out the arena, and crowd goes crazy. Kill Cass! Frost Hammer! Wins again! And that's the end of the match. Well, we're up against... So we got... <laughs> I'm not sure that this has helped at all. <laughs> well, it is three on one. He fights hand-to-hand. Yeah, that's his fault. Well, it's three-on-one at the end of the day. Listen, here's what I... Listen, boys. Here's what I say. I say we talk to this Mr. Killcast tomorrow, and we see... How much gold do we have all together here? I have uh, 120 now. Perhaps we could influence him in some way to be... He strikes me as the... Not the type, but... I'm not sure that we could even get an audience with. Uh, well, well, he said he's in charge. He, so he's in charge of. Uh, I, as I understand, he's in charge of the arena and all of the the workings within it. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's in charge of it, and he's a contestant within it. God only knows what happens if he dies. But you know what I mean. Like we could still, we could still like it. Like we could talk to him. Like that sounds like he would be available for us to have the conversation. Yep. Good try. All right. Sounds good. So, are you guys gonna attempt to? It's still nighttime. It's still nighttime. You can get but... some sleep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you guys head back. Right. Right. We head back to the inn. Right. We're right. good. We don't have anything else to do. 
let's say I take a lady dwarf home, I think. Perhaps, I, like, I, I try to get her to come home. Uh, kind of roll a persuasion check? Roll a check, yeah. Seven. Seven? Nope. <laughs> All right. Nope. Like, eh, nope. Too tall. All right. Well, <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> better to have loved and lost. That's what I say, boys. Okay. Anyway, on we go. Okay. All right, so you guys um, turn in for the evening. Mm -hmm. Morning comes around. You guys get a full rest. So it's a little later on in the morning. So you guys got beds this time around. You know, probably slept in a little bit. You, you, you smell the breakfast cooking down at the first floor of the inn. And it's morning time now. Okay. All right, beautiful. I, I can smell the eggs. I wake up. I wake up to the, the, the smell of. I wake up to the smell of eggs and uh, cr crispy uh, bacon. I, I wake up and uh, you know. Oh, thank God, we came in last night. We avoided our trap by by all like odds. But we were so drunk. I guess we just walked right over it. <laughs> so good, good deal. All right, uh, Alof, what'd you say? You pick up. Uh, you pick. What time's checkout? Uh, checkout's eleven. Eleven o'clock. What time yep. is it? Uh, it's probably nine. Nice. Okay. Morning. I guess, right we, I guess we drag him with us. We can just drop him off in a corner at the park. Oh, yes. Prop him up in a seat. Yep. And you guys can always leave him at the inn again. And then we got ready for, for room day. another night. Yeah. Yeah. That's expensive. How much is the room? Uh, it is eight first, silver. First night on the ha on the house. Right? Eight, eight, <laughs> it's uh, eight silver. Okay. Eight silver. Oh, eight silver and a. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's expensive, right? Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, we just, we, what do you say, we just drag our boy off, we just flop him in the corner while we do whatever we gotta do in the arena. Uh, perhaps, we're not, we're not even sure we're going into the arena at this point. So you guys are gonna weekend at Bernie's, uh, just drag James along. James. Uh, Alof can carry him to the arena, and we just flop him in the corner if we need to, and, uh, they have a babysitting service, perhaps. Put him in a seat? Yeah, we put him in a seat, yeah, we pay, pay, for, how much is a seat? I don't know. You haven't been oh, here yet. <laughs> well, no, we were there last night. How much was it? No, um, we'll say really cheap, probably because we didn't really. Yeah, they, they'd probably be two silver. Okay, yeah, real fucking. We just put him in a seat. He was <laughs> flopping him up. I used some of my fifty foot of rope to kind of pop his head up, and uh, he, he looks like he's a he's a, a foam figure on his hand. Yeah, he's an enraptured. Uh, yeah, he's an enraptured go. viewer. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that works. Yeah. That okay. Worked. Um. So. Morning time. The few folks that the a large throng is moving towards the mines. Obviously, that's mm -hmm. where most of them were. Small portion of people um, visiting nobles. People on the way to uh, Scavale mm -hmm. are still walking towards the arena, mm -hmm. and you guys are making your way towards that venue now. Does the arena go all day? It's an all-day thing. It has. Um, Time slots. Okay, okay. So it does one uh, in the midday and one during the so evening. So we gotta get in and get our place. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. So off we go. Yep. All right. Uh, we should find the nearest receptionist, I guess. Reception <laughs> at the arena. Yeah. We, are, we are here now. All right. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So you guys are at the arena. You walk We're up. Gonna use our wet stones. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, with the rest. We, we use our wet stones. Mm -hmm. Before we leave, let's say, we, we use our wet stones. Uh, and Oh shit! No, wait a minute. I need to go to the blacksmith and get my bow back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So glad you. Yeah, yeah. I uh, like, I don't know what. And they're saying your sword. Yeah, my, from my, the my sword. Yeah, and I unhook, before we check out, I go, I get my sword undone. I still have the uh, I still have the the liver attached to it. Mm. Uh, yeah. And so uh, like I but I pocket that, put it right. back in my scabbard, and then we head to the blacksmith. Okay. All right. You walk in. Uh, he's. I worked all night on this, but uh, I think it was worth it. Uh huh. Hands you back the bow. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's got a shine to it now. Mm -hmm. you, the string's a little tighter, and you found it is effectively a plus one bow now. Okay, so it was plus five before now it's plus six. Right? Well, no. What that means is uh, so that's your plus to hit. Uh -huh. A plus one bow means anytime you make a roll at any point, it's you add an extra plus one. Okay. So it, yes, gotcha. it becomes a plus six, but that bow is always going to be a plus one. Plus one to whatever the fuck. Whatever you do. Okay, got gotcha. uh, Including damage. Okay, so damage yeah. and attack. That's awesome. That that bow. So he says, I love it. Hope it sings true for you, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, come back anytime. Looks good. I have my doubts, but uh, I, I will send more business your way. This seems like good, good, good work, I would say. Wish y'all luck. Good luck. Thanks, Aloff. I appreciate it for the loan. 
Okay, so you guys head out and head to the Coliseum now. I, I say we head to the Coliseum. You boys have any uh, any rejection to that or any, any thoughts? I feel like we're gonna have to fight this guy. Most likely, I mean, maybe we can talk our way through it, but we need to think about how we're gonna beat him if it does come to that. I mean, we saw what he did to three people identical to to our party. <laughs> Yeah, you can't. You can't you don't break our legs. Yeah. yeah, it was literally our party except a fighter. Let's say we talk to him and learn a little, because he's also running the show, and he's also the champion of the show. Perhaps by talking to him and engaging him in a conversation, we could learn something about his abilities and uh, understand more about this. this, this well, you know he's melee. Yeah, You're, he's uh, all hand to hand, not armored at all. Yeah. I, I saw him dragon kick that 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 uh, that that um, uh, fighter last night. That was, that was insane. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So perhaps we could learn something about him, why he does things the way he does. Perhaps we could learn. Yeah, well, well we just talk to the man. So yeah. let let's ask the receptionist if we can be granted an audience with the frozen hammer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so you guys walk up to the front. It's a uh, kind of a nonchalant teenager. Uh, it's like, uh, what's up, man? You got any weed? No. Okay. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, y'all, uh, y'all watching? Uh, no, no, no. We we were we were uh, we were going to compete. Uh, we hear that uh, Frozen Hammer runs the show around here. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, he's the he's the El Jefe. El Jefe. El Jefe, yeah, What's big boss. Mean? Big boss. Yeah, he's, he's big Hugo boss. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a dwarf or man. Uh young teenage human. Is yep. it frozen hammer or a dwarf or man? Uh he that's a dwarf. It's a dwarf. dwarf. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. okay. Uh um uh, we, we 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 have an interest in competing in this tournament. However, we would like to talk to Frozen Hammer uh to discuss the uh ins and outs of this this entire thing. Uh, are all four of you competing? Four? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. We, so, we, we, we need, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we need, we need, we need the, so, I assume you have babysitting services for people that have children, perhaps, uh, uh we got seats, sir. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so, we would, uh, <clears throat> our boy here, he's really tired, he was so drunk last night. You're... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we want to. We would like to put him up in a seat, uh, and so he could watch. Uh, but we were going to compete, and uh, he said he would love to see our our uh, us in action. Uh, oh well, yeah, he's just saving it, right? He's saving it up for when y'all get going or something. Oh yeah, yeah, he's saving up. He he is he's a master in his in his skills. Right. He is, but but observation is his primary skill, especially over the last two days. <laughs> All right, yeah, that'll be uh, two silver for your bro here to come hang out in the bleachers while y'all compete. I reach back and I twitch James's loose skin at the back of his neck. I would care if there's two silver, and I and I, and I give him <laughs> two silver and I make it look like James did. All right, he's cool. And then for so you three are all competing in the Coliseum, right? You are looking for a job. This is an interview, right? This is an interview. Cool. Sign these waivers, please. And hands you a sheet of paper. Place them says the lodestones are not responsible for the interview process or what anything might happen in the interview process. Because if you guys just sign that, you're good to go. All right. Wait, so we can talk to it? We can get an audience? We can talk to the man after the response. Uh, I don't know. I just stand up here. You got to go in. Gotta go in yeah, up. you got to go in. I don't know what happens in there. Man. Wait, so how many... So <laughs> I, I assume that um, I, I, based on my very basic knowledge of how these things work, I would assume that uh, Frozen Hammer is going to be the last contestant we face in this ring, and we will face many others before. Right, yeah, there are three rounds uh-huh. uh, that you will fight in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can take a little break in between each round if you call it out. You know, just remember to call it out. Uh, and you can take a little break. And yeah, at the end, you fight Kill Cast Frost Hammer. And if you beat him, you get to be the second in command. Uh, the lodestones and counts pretty cool. Nobody's done it. Mm. Has yeah. anyone come close? Uh, no. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, well, yeah, actually, about a week and a half ago, yeah, there was this pretty dope dude that came through. Yeah, he he came through. Yeah, he, he did pretty good. What was his name? Oh, man, I didn't catch his name, but he was, like, sick looking. He was, like, this silver looking dragon dude that came through and, like, wielded a sword and he whooped ass. Yeah. Dragonborn. Yeah. He, we, dragon. we, we don't see many around these parts of the Dragonborn. I've never seen one before, man. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. This dude, he didn't say a fucking well, you word. said he almost. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah, what's you. up? <laughs> so, uh, you, he was a Dragonborn. You, you said he almost won. That that went so he did he was defeated. Well, man, it was kind of weird, right? Like uh, they'd never seen it before, or nothing like that. But Killcast was just like, bro, like this dude is so legit that he can just get a pass, man. Like he gave him a pass, gave him a pat on the back, said, bro, if you ever need anything, I got you, and sent him on his way. He never fought the dude, man. It was Crazy. Never fought the dude. Nah, man. I don't know why he fights everybody else, but this dude. I don't know. This dude. This dude was gnarly. What? Yeah. Okay. He's crazy. Yeah. Okay. He's, like, dude. The dude was breathing my ice breaths and bullshit. Like, yeah, he, he was freezing shit out there, and come in, chop him, and like break him in half. Yeah, that dude was. So he fought the crazy. the previous two rounds, and then before yeah. before the third round, he engaged. Killcast came out and gave him bro fist, man. It was just like, wow, he's yeah, like, we've never seen that shit before. And Killcast was running this dude for like a decade. First time I've ever seen that thing. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that, that yeah, incredible. Incredible. it's crazy. All right, uh, how much does it cost to enter? Uh, does it cost a thing, man? Yeah, really? the interview process, brother. Interview. Yeah, you, probably, you know, it's pay the interview. All right, word. All right, well, just come on in. And uh, he kind of points you out to a side entrance uh, around the corner from the main entrance uh -huh. that you guys walk into. Right. You see a few other groups. There's, uh, it's mostly younger people that are attempting to try to get into the Lodestones, right? Okay. Uh, so they got swords. Uh, there's a couple with bows not a lot with like you see like one or two mages but not many uh most of them are fighters and stuff like that you see a couple of the dwarven and they, they look like miners because they're covered in soot and stuff like that maybe they're trying their luck something like that get out of the mines uh but you see a smorgasbord of of people uh as you guys walk into the lobby you guys have dropped james off now be sitting in a in the nosebleeds, you know, off in the corner, you know, just laying up. Mm -hmm. and so he he's uh he's good, he's chilling, uh, being chilling. Good and, deal. Yeah. So yeah, you guys are now in the pit. Okay. Uh, okay. Of this arena. Understood. Yeah. All right. So we're walking around in the pit. Mm -hmm. Uh, do do um, do we have any idea as to who we're going to be fighting? Uh, or do we need to speak to someone to understand what? Or do we just find that mm -hmm. out whenever we walk outside? Uh, okay, so there is, you see everybody kind of lining up around a mini announcer guy who's kind of like got a slick outfit on, clean cut, little mustache and everything, and just pointing people to different directions and saying, okay, you're about to go, you're about to go up, uh, get ready, prepping the next group for, to go up, and uh, uh, so that that's the guy it seems like everybody's going to talk to. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you guys are approaching him. And uh, he says, "Oh, good new new combatants, uh, or, or or should I say, interviewees? <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, is that what you guys are here for? Here to interview? Uh, yeah, we we are here to interview. Uh, what do you, what you, what what do you say, boys? All here to interview? Yeah, we we're wanting to talk to him if, if possible. Oh, you want to talk to the big boss? Okay, uh, hmm, let me see." Okay, he's generally pretty private kind of guy, but I have seen him like come out and do like really good in the first round. Mm -hmm. So if you guys can not kick ass, he might he might come out and say a couple words to you and see where you're from and all that. Uh, definitely. Do, do we fight uh, slaves or like uh, do are we fighting like uh? Uh, these and like to call them slaves. Well, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a little. That's a little on the it's nose. A little yeah, that's a little bit of a word. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That's a, it's not good for the laws. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. so uh, do are we fighting? I have to call them interns. Other contestants in this lobby, or are no, we? Oh, okay, you don't okay. fight the other contestants. Okay. No, no, no. We we don't. Uh, we think that would be a little too gruesome, a little too bloody. Really, wouldn't be healthy for the hiring process. 
process. I agree. Um, so no, you guys will be fighting uh, individual, uh, we'll say, combatants that are trained to train you guys. Uh, so it's all official and on the up and up, uh, but it's randomized. So you won't fight the exact same thing another group does. We don't want to make a pattern or something like that. We got to keep it fresh. For keep it interesting. Viewers. Yeah, exactly. Very well. Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, so that's that's uh, essentially how it works. So you guys are all com- uh, interviewees then. All right. All right. Very well, sir. Uh, I, um, what, what say you boys? Gather down and uh, we, we kind of kneel down. We kind of do a little huddle, like one, ar- one arm over the other. And we just, we, we have a little, you know, huddle. Uh, what's the schedule? So if you do win the first round, how long until the second you... Uh, so you got time, so, uh, you got roughly an hour before the next fight, and then, uh, Kilcass, he likes to get ready, uh, because sometimes, you know, teams don't make it, so he doesn't always have to fight. Uh, so it'll take roughly four hours after the second fight before you fight Kilcass. Sounds like we need to... Okay. Go all out the first round. Yeah. Uh, especially by me. I'm not particularly concerned about the first two rounds. Pretty sure after what we've been through, we should be able to make short work of whatever these lodestone fellas have to offer. Fair enough. And we will have James cheering us on from the crowd. That'll be motivating. Uh, you guys have a have a have a fan club. Oh, that's great. Uh, is there a name? Do you guys have a name for your group or anything like that? Oh, uh, us we we call our so uh we call ourselves the the generates. Gen the ge- the generates. The yes. Generates. Yeah. yeah, because back home there's things called degenerates, and we are not that. We are generates. Hmm. With generate. You generate. That's right. We generate. We generate. <laughs> you generate. Correct. We generate. We, gen- we generate uh, camaraderie <laughs> and fellowship. All right. Since you were all able to figure out your name so quickly, you'll be next up on the uh, the oh, fighting round. Uh, everybody else, they can't figure out their name. There's confusion. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta have it. So you guys will be next. Uh, it'll be roughly ten minutes. Uh, freshen up. Do whatever you need to before we we get into it. All right. So you guys are in the lobby of the arena. You have roughly about 10 minutes before your match gets started. Uh, It's filled with people, you know, milling around, hoping for employment. Uh, And that's where you find you guys before you go out. And and so we're milling around in there with the people. Right. Um, And and we're looking for, so we've already gotten through the main individual. Uh, Sure, you can talk to anybody too. uh, Okay. Are there any characters around that look as though that maybe they're repeat customers, you know, that we could talk to to gain info? Um, Um, There is one kind of person kind of standing off to the back a little bit, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not involved in any group or anything like that. You can see that they have a pretty nice uh, flintlock pistol on their on their hip and a musket on their back, and uh, she stands out from the rest of the crowd. So it's she, yeah, she okay, okay. Them. okay, and she's kind of just hanging out in the back, okay, you know, looking over everything. Um, I, I, let, let me just ask this out of character because I'm not really sure who I'd ask this question to. At mm-hmm. Perhaps I let, let's say I run back up to the individual that we got her. We we that let us in the 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 the, old, the little pothead that that we talked to at the, the front gate, uh, and uh, I say, uh, say, uh, you were going to say, you know, all four of us are. Yeah, does, what's up, bro? Does that mean all four of us? Like we could have four individuals go in at the same time? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, groups of four go in too. Yeah. What about sure. five? Five? Ooh, no, I think that's pushing the limits. Okay. I think it's just four. Okay, four. Yeah. All right. Thanks, bro. Appreciate yeah, it. <laughs> no, th- this bump. This bump. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so, <clears throat> listen, guys. Uh, there, there's there, that, that chick over there. She looks pretty hardcore. Uh, what do you say? We says we have we can have four people in our group. Uh, we we over and talk to her and see if we can sway her and uh, see what her interests are in this whole event. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, you all three 
approach this woman kind of sitting in the back you know like i said she's very nonchalant and uh she looks up and says uh can i help you it's a human woman red red haired other than that there's no scarring or anything on her face uh like i said she's just hanging out and uh she says uh, can, can i help you is she sitting down or is she standing, standing up? And just standing up. Okay, so she's leaning against the wall. Or, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so I, I, I go and I lean uh, on the wall with her. Okay. And I was like, All right. She uh, goes like, uh, yeah, yeah. Howdy. Yeah, I know you don't usually see folks like me around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, so we are planning on going in this room. What's your name, lady? Uh, my name is. Uh, they call me Old Harris. Old Harris. Old Harris. How, yeah. uh, how old does she look? Uh, she looks really young. Oh, okay. Well, I call you old. You look mighty young. No, dude, just call me that. I'd okay. say uh, uh, act old for my age or something. Like that. What's your mother call you? Uh, she had, is that important? I don't think that's really important. Well, Might be. Had, uh, <laughs> guess roll uh, persuasion with disadvantage. Damn it. Fucking one, dude. Ooh, I swear right. to God. She says, yeah, there's rolls. No way I am telling you my name. And why are you all, is is something wrong? Why? Oh. Now she starts reaching for like, her hand. No, I'm glad you asked. Her hand, um, like, is, is there a problem? Fago, talk to the lady. I'm, uh, um, so, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Fago, he's tying his shoes. Uh, I, I, so... I was curious, madame. Um, are you planning on going into the arena today? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Then why, why are you in here? You must have signed. You said uh, this. Is, we got in here by saying we're volunteering. Are you not volunteering? No, I work here. You, you work doing what? I, uh, I'm one of the interviewee rounds, as they like to say. Ah. Mm-hmm. Interviewee okay. rounds. Mm-hmm. Interviewee. Yeah. So we're facing, we're Are facing you. Are you all interviewees? Yes. I imagine. Okay, well, maybe or maybe not. If you all make it through, you will see me and I will be able to do my job. Have you and ever... I, I'm sorry. Huh? Uh, have you ever fought alongside anyone in the arena? Yeah, Killcast is my boss. Ah. You ever fought against Killcast? No, why would I fight against my boss? It's my boss. No, <laughs> of course not. It's a monster. Have you seen his ass? Fucking snaps people in half like it's nothing. I'm not gonna fight him. It's crazy. Saw him last night. I've seen fiercer. That's cool. Yeah. But no, no, that's that's my job. I, I'm uh, I'm back at the third round. All right. Well, sounds like a dud to me, boys. Right? Uh, hold up. What do you know about the silver dragon that almost bested? Oh, Rosenhammer, dude. Man, I've I've never seen Killcast like worry, but man, that dude—it's like he walked through the two rounds as he was going. Like it, nothing phased the guy. Uh, there was some woman with him too, but she chose not to fight. It was just him, and like Killcast didn't want a part of it. Man, like I mean, everybody in the audience knew it that you know that guy. He meant business. Do you think it was due to his prowess, or do you think it was maybe due to the man's character? The dragon guy? Yeah. He was scared of him. I mean, he was chopping up people that had weapons. If Killcast came at him, he wouldn't have had a chance. And the dragon fought with what? A sword. A little rape. And it was like a flash. He just came through, glinting. Flashing and uh, nothing stood against him. Like the, the only blood that was on him was from everything else. I'll say that much. Yeah, that, that guy was serious. And Killcast let him and that woman through and they just went on. Does he hold position in the load zones now? Uh, the dragon board? No, he didn't even ask about it. He just needed to pass. Yep. And then they left. Crazy. I never caught the dude's name. Well, uh, <laughs> um, is there anything to say to this chick? What would it take to recruit you? <laughs> to, to what? To fight in the arena. To fight Killcast? Sure. 
Well, man, I don't know. You're gonna have to owe me a Wookiee life debt or something for that, man. <laughs> like, I, I can't even put a price on that. I mean, if I had to charge a price, like, as for a thousand gold, yeah, I'd get punched in the face if I killed Cast. Yeah, that dude's rough. I'm not gonna do that for free. Like, I mean, I got a prize, but I'm just telling you, like, we're just all going to get punched in the face, like, repeatedly. <laughs> at least I'm going to get paid for it, right? So he fights with his hands. Uh, is, is this, is uh, Killcast a monk? Uh, I don't know what a monk is, but I guess you could call him that. If they fight with bare hands, break skulls, yeah. From what I know about monks, they do. No, oh, okay, well, yeah, he's a monk. Yeah, for sure. I suppose you're more weak than this dragon and his female companion. Uh, well, you didn't. I wasn't going to hop in there. Gilcast wasn't. No, no way. So, so there is... Gilcast can be bested. It's been shown. I've never seen it, but he didn't get in with that guy. So, hmm. hey, he just pays my paycheck. Any other advice? Advice against Gilcast? Hmm. Careful about shooting at him. Yeah, it's all, it's all what he did to the missiles. Yeah, he's pretty fast, man. If I was up against him one on one, I wouldn't shoot at him. Sh- shooting at him with a with a uh, a musket or flintlock, or you saying shooting at him with a bow? Any any sort of long range? Is that Even one, anything. Dude's a freaking nature. You wouldn't shoot at him. Nope. That's okay. why I don't shoot at him. All right. A freaking nature, like as a boss. Is it, how, how is he as a boss? Are, are you treating him well at work? No, I don't see him much. I mean, I see him out in the arena, and then other than that, pays him paycheck. I hang out here. That's about it. About as much as I interact with him. No, nah, he's a pretty violent dude, though. Like, yeah, no, fuck that. He's an asshole, like, if you're on the wrong side of him. But, you know, I'm not. So, whatever. Uh, anything else, cats, that I can help you with? Uh, questions? So we'll get to the first round. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe I'll see y'all in the third. <laughs> all right. Then. Uh, she walks off, and by this time, yeah, it's uh, it, the other group is now leaving. Uh, they didn't make it to the third round. They got beat in the in the second, but were able to get out. The announcer walks up to you guys and says, "Okay, uh, the the generates is that right? The the geriatrics." The geriatrics? The generates. The generates. The generates. The generates. Okay, y'all, you three are up. Ready to go? Absolutely. Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> Do you guys want to look around here to see if there's anyone else that could fight alongside us? Or okay. Well, we have we have very little. Like I said, that was the only one. That was the only one that stood out. That's okay. Yeah, so we yes. have high way of bargaining chips at this <laughs> at this moment. Well, I, mean, I guess you guys can. Uh, if you want to, oh, if they're going in by themselves, yeah. they'd stand a better chance with us than they would by themselves. Well, they're probably not by themselves, but that doesn't mean you can't poach a teammate or or something like that for mm-hmm. sure. Um, what do you I say? Think? Maybe we'll uh, we can do the first round. Maybe we can do that on the second round or something. If we okay, yeah, that's well, fair. Yeah, that's sure. Fair. Let, let's we, build we, this out. We, if we if we go in with one, we with need to one. make a show. We can't have these. Uh, who knows what? You know, who knows? Oh what yeah, I wonder. People. I wonder if the dragonborn soloed that, or no? She she said he had a companion. And, and I'm also wondering, like, if we go, if we start as three people, can we come into the second round with four people? Or we stuck to three? Because it seems like we, it seems like we should be stuck to three. You guys want to add a team member halfway through? Right. The big yikes. No, that's probably not uh, kosher with the rules. Right. I've never seen so that. But now. if you enter in with four people, yeah, you guys can go on with four people. Right. For sure. That makes sense. But hurry, you only got a few minutes before we're going to give your spot up and you have to wait. I say we quickly scope out the place for, say, a player. Any actually any individual that might just stand out to us, and if we we just see like what what's around. Um, you don't see anybody that seems like they're like religious based or anything like that. Uh, but I will say, you see like a you see a couple uh, different maybe magic wielders. You see uh, a couple of guys with swords, a couple with arrow, or bows and arrows. Uh, so it just depends on who you want to talk to. So 
seemingly bows and arrows ain't gonna do any good against uh, uh right. what's face. So we'll, we'll say we get us some melee fighter. Good with, good with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we 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 waltz up to the biggest, roughest, toughest looking motherfucker in this place, and we say, and we say, hey, uh, what, what, what's your deal? What's what you here for? Yeah. Uh, where, where you guys coming from? Where, how can I? Uh, where 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 you? What can I help you with? I'm here to to get a job. Get a job. Well, I'm from the far east. And I'm headed north. Well, Me and the, my boys here, uh-huh. we have gathered together to, uh, uh, we are gathered together and we, we are looking to succeed in this arena. Yes. I, I assume you're looking to do so to get a pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I need, I need work. I need a job. I, I, yeah. Okay. And you can get one once you have a pass, correct? Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the deal. Very I'm good. here with my buddy right now. Your I'm, buddy. I'm, I'm going to help him out. Yeah. And it's one, like this little scrawny line. Like from the back, kind of yeah, you know, a little bit. You know, I'll be able to look right. I scoot between. I I move in between the vision of you and your buddy, and I say, "Hey, look, this this fucking loser is gonna get you killed out there." We whoa, 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 whoa. loser! This is my good buddy. Like uh, we go mining. We mine. We mine all. I have mine. no doubts. He's a great person. He's a good guy. He's a great He's guy. A great guy. He's a wonderful great guy. Great guy. Wonderful. I have no right. doubts. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel. I feel like he will end up resulting in your death if you go into that arena with him. Uh, he he is. What? He's like four foot three. Like he's so, yeah yeah like it, this this guy's no good. It, like we 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 are uh, look, not enough meats. Three, yeah, three powerful adventurers here, and, and we mm. can get you that past better than anyone, perhaps. So what's your name? Uh, as, as he says that, I fucking cast thaumaturge to make my eyes look. Oh, oh, this guy right here, he's a serious guy. Oh, okay, okay. This, yeah, there you go. You guys rough tumble. You guys been in a couple, couple scrap. Look at, uh, roll me a persuasion check. They go can help because he's. Casting a thaumaturgy, so you can roll a d22. 14. 17. Shit, yeah. He looks at his buddy and he says, uh, Well, maybe if I get in, I can get you in. You know, it's like, maybe if I get in, you know, like, I can be better for you. Better for better for the both of us if I just go with these guys, these guys, these guys right now. And uh, so I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with them yeah, and try it out. The buddy's like, and uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> he said, "You gotta in my seat." And uh, the big guy, uh, he says, "My name's uh, Bruno, uh, Bruno, mm. Bruno, Bruno, big guy, Bruno, big guy, Bruno, big." Guy. Nice to meet you, Bruno. Uh, and he, uh, so he says, "Yeah, I'll pay for your seat." And he gives uh, two silver to his buddy. Go get a seat up in the bleachers, sits next to James. Oh, yeah, James, yeah, he's a, he's yeah. a very lively character. And, you know, he wanders off and, <laughs> you know, you see him, he's muttering something. He sits next to James. Mm-hmm. And uh, now you have uh, Bruno, the big guy, uh, that is going to be joining nice. with you guys. You guys walk back up to the uh, uh, commissioner, and he says, oh, you got a, you got a fourth member. Great. Awesome. Uh, it's about time, though. You, you ready? Ready to put the show on the road? Get the interview going? Okay. Good. Yeah. Go All right. It. Let's go. You 